with the batting order for the visiting Arizona State Sun Devils who come in at 10 and 13 overall, 3 and 5 in Pac-12 play. They will go with Harris Williams, the left fielder in the leadoff spot. He's batted there in every game of this series. Nick McClain, the center fielder, will bat second. In the third spot, the catcher, Ryan Campos. In the cleanup spot, it's the first baseman, Jacob Tobias. He'll be followed by Ethan Mendoza, the second baseman. Brandon Compton, the designated hitter today, bats sixth. Josiah Cromwick, who we have not seen yet in this series, will bat seventh. He'll be followed by the third baseman, Mario Demera. Steven Andina, the shortstop, will bat ninth for the Sun Devils. Your starting pitcher for the Cougs today is the left-hander Spencer Jones. He comes in with a 7.56 ERA, 1-2 and two on the season. This will be his seventh appearance and his sixth start for Washington State. In the field for the Cougars today, it'll look like this. Behind the plate, Jacob Morrow got an off day yesterday. He's back behind the plate there today. The pitcher we mentioned is Spencer Jones. At first base, Joey Kramer once again. Uh, your second baseman is Crew Park. Your shortstop is Kyle Russell. Third base is Cole Kramer. So the same infield that we've seen in each of the first two games of this series is the same that we see again here today. In right field is Max Hartman, the Canadian. Center field today is Logan Johnson. John Stone making his first start in this in the field in this series. He was a designated hitter the other day. And your left fielder is Kaysen Taggart, who made a brilliant catch out there to rob potential extra bases in yesterday's game. We've got a meeting at the mound right now between the Cougars head coach, Nathan Choate, and the Sun Devils head coach, Willie Bloomquist. Once again, a name that Northwest baseball fans remember as Bloomquist grew up on the west side of the state in uh, Port Orchard, Washington, and played for the Mariners for seven seasons from 2002 to 2008, back now coaching at his alma mater. Your umpires today behind home plate to Stephen Corvey. First base ump is Gary DeFabio. At second base is Christopher Gonzalez. And at third base is Eric Peterson today. Continuing to update you on that NCAA tournament game involving a Pac-12 team uh, out in Indianapolis right now. It's Marquette with a 77 to 76 lead over the Colorado Buffaloes with 223 remaining in the ball game. My wife is a Marquette grad, so the Dice family is uh, rooting for the team in white here today, even though a win for the Pac-12 would mean more money for the Washington State Athletic Department with those NCAA units. All right, once again, the Cougs in the white pinstripe jerseys and pants today with the crimson caps and stockings and the Sun Devils in the all gray jerseys and pants with the maroon and gold lettering and maroon caps here as well. Spencer Jones taking the last of his warm-up tosses and then we will be just about ready for baseball here in Pullman. Jones, six foot four, 235 pound senior. He's a lefty out of Salt Lake City, Utah. Started his collegiate career at Salt Lake Community College. He made seven starts for the Cougs last year. This will be his sixth this year. And he comes in again with a one and two record and a 7.56 ERA in 25 innings pitched. He's allowed 28 hits, 23 runs, 21 of them earned, and he has 18 strikeouts to nine walks. You heard Coach Nathan Choate in the pregame say, you know, hoping to get four or five innings from Spencer today before turning it over to the bullpen. And most of the arms in the bullpen will be available today, with the exception of Chase Grillo, the closer, who pitched the ninth inning in each of the last two ball games. And you heard it, the let's play ball from the PA announcer, and we are ready to get things going here. Once again, Cougs looking for a three-game sweep of the Sun Devils, which they did in ASU's last visit to Pullman two years ago, back in 2022. Leading things off for Arizona State is Harris Williams, the left fielder. First pitch from Jones, a swing and a miss from Williams, and he's ahead of the count here quickly at 0-1. Williams batting 313 on the year. Next pitch from Jones on the way. That is skips to the catcher Morrow outside for ball one. Williams, the left-hander, taps the plate. Here comes the 1-1 delivery now from Jones. Up high, ball two. Jones. 
about 89 to 91 with the fastball. You'll see a slider from him and a changeup as well. Here's the 2-1 now to Williams. Williams checks his swing. He did not go around, and the count goes to three and one. So a hitter's count here, the first batter of the ball game. Here's the three one from Jones. Swung on and hit up the middle for a base hit. So a leadoff single for Williams between the gap between the second baseman, Crew Park, and the second base bag. So he had a hitter's count and he took advantage of it for a leadoff base hit here in the first. And that's going to bring up Nick McLean, who has moved up in the order each day in this series, now batting second and playing center fielder today. And he's been a bit of a problem for the Cougs to get out in the first two runs of this ballgame. He's a switch hitter, by the way, but will bat right, at least in this at bat, against the left hander Jones. And Jones will throw back over to first, but back in time is Harris Williams. Williams does lead the Sun Devils in stolen bases with six in eight attempts on the year. Jones looks over to first, now comes to the plate. Fires just outside for ball one. Jones gets the sign from his catcher, Morrow. Here's the 1-0 delivery. That's in there for a strike. Fastball at 88 miles per hour. The 1-1 one -one to McLean. Swung on and lifted in the gap in left center field. Johnstone is ranging over. He'll make the play on the run for the first out of the ball game. Looked like it might be trouble, but it just sort of hung up in the air for a while, and that allowed Johnstone to make a play running into the gap in left center field and catching it uh, with ease. So one away here now in the first, and that's going to bring up the catcher, Ryan Campos. Throw over to first, back in time though, is Williams. Campos in yesterday's ball game was one for four with two runs scored. He's batting 271 on the year, swing and a miss at a change up there from Jones and the count is 0-1. Jones sets and the 0-1 delivery just outside to the left-handed hitter and the count goes even here at one and one. Jones takes a look at first and now comes to the plate. That one's fouled back and out of play. And Jones now in front of the count here at one and two. Again, a fairly steady rain here in Pullman. I wouldn't call it a downpour, but it's certainly more than a sprinkle. Here's the one-two now, just outside, ball two. All right, two-two pitch on the way now to Campos, down in the dirt, they almost caught Williams in a pickoff attempt. It looked like he was thinking about taking off when the ball initially got away from Morrow a little bit, and they might have had a chance at a snap throw to first to catch him. But uh, Morrow held on to the ball and just played it safe. So the count is now full, three and two to Campos, the catcher out of Mesa, Arizona. Here's the pitch, and it's on the ground of the third baseman. Kramer, he can't snag it in his glove, and everybody's going to be safe as it trickles in the shallow left field. Almost looked like Kramer overran the ball a little bit, and then with a wet ball, things might happen here today, you know, where you see some interesting plays like that that just kind of squirted out of the glove. So... They're going to call that an error. So Campos reaches on the error, and Williams advances to second. So two on and still just one out 
here in the top half of the first. And that brings up Jacob Tobias, and he takes a big cut at that first pitch and sends it foul and out of play back towards the Cougar clubhouse. Tobias batting 316 on the year, four home runs. A look back at second. Now the 0-1 delivery outside, ball one. Big spot here for Spencer Jones. 1-1 one, one delivery, in there for a strike. Fastball at 89. A lot of left-handed hitters in this ASU lineup. You heard head coach Nathan Choate talk about it. Jacob Tobias is one of them. And the wind is blowing out to right. Swing and a miss for Tobias. And a big out there via the strikeout by Spencer Jones. Two outs in the inning. First strikeout of the day for Jones. And again, comes in a big spot there to get that second out and keep those runners where they're at, at first and second. And that brings up Ethan Mendoza. And Mendoza had a big game for the Sun Devils yesterday. He was four for four in last night's ballgame. Look back at second. Now the first pitch to Mendoza is low for ball one. Another out here, and Jones is going to be able to get out of this inning. Look back at second. Still looking back at second. Here he comes to the plate now with the 1-0. That's ripped into left field, and that's going to be trouble. One run is going to score. Campos is heading to third and will hold up there. An RBI double off the bat of Ethan Mendoza, who continues his hot hitting from yesterday's game. And the Sun Devils strike first, one nothing. Well, Jones was one out away from getting out of this inning, but uh, the double off the bat of Mendoza there puts ASU on the board early here in the first. See if Jones can buckle down and get one more out. This is Brandon Compton. Fouls one back and out of play towards the uh, entrance to Bailey Brayton here, or Bailey Brayton Field here, off towards the left field side. Compton, another dangerous hitter, batting 354 on the year with five home runs. 0-1 delivery, swing and a miss from Compton, and Jones now ahead of count here, 0-2. The 0-2 delivery now to Compton. Down low in the dirt. Nice job by Moore to stay in front of it. It's one and two. Believe that was the changeup again from Jones, which he hasn't quite located yet. But I'm told that is his best off-speed pitch, and he's willing to go to it. All right, here's the one-two now. Down low again, two and two. Compton was one for four with a walk in yesterday's game. He batted in the second spot yesterday. He's batting sixth here today. Here's Jones with the 2-2 two -two to Compton. Pitch out, back throw, snap throw to third, but back in time is Campos. Campos has been toying with the pitcher a little bit, leading off, kind of coming up that third base line towards home plate to try to get in his head just a little bit, and Morrow almost caught him on a throw back to third. So the count is now full, though, three and two. Here comes Jones to the plate. Oh, almost blew it by him, but Compton got a piece to send it back into the wall behind home plate, and the count remains full here at three and two. Here's a 3-2 pitch to Compton, swung on on the ground, right to Crew Park though, gobbles it up, bobbles it for a second, but then fires the first in time, and the Cougs get out of the inning without any further damage. We go to the bottom half of the first, it's Sun Devils 1, Cougars 
up to bat. Hey Cougs, life doesn't stop at retirement. Bishop Place has a wide range of activities, social events, and fitness options depending on your interests. We have many options to explore depending on the level of care you need. Bishop Place also has housekeeping, dining, and transportation services. Less worry, less chores, more life, and more choices. Visit us on the web at bishopplace.net or call to schedule your tour today. 509-334-9488. We can't wait to see you. It's time to bring the big game to your backyard with spring savings on steel. Our AK Homeowner System battery tools start at just $199.99. Find yours at over 10,000 local dealers. Steel is a proud supporter of your Washington State Cougars. Real steel. Find yours. All prices SNW SRP. All right, welcome back. It has just gone final in Indianapolis. Another Pac-12 team has exited the NCAA tournament as the second seed Marquette hangs on to defeat Colorado in a close game, 81 to 77, and uh, it was close throughout. Uh, but the Buffs go down to the two seed Marquette. That means just one Pac-12 team is still alive, and that is Tommy Lloyd's Arizona uh, Wildcats as they will continue on in the tourney. I believe they get the winner of Baylor and Clemson. Yes, uh, thank you for the assist there, Andrew, in the studio <laughs> in their next round game uh, of the tournament. So here in Pullman, the Cougs are just about to come to bat here, and it's going to be... Max Hartman, the right fielder, leading things off. He'll be followed by the shortstop, Kyle Russell. The left fielder, Case and Taggart, bats third. In the cleanup spot is the first baseman, Joey Kramer. Jacob Morrow, the catcher, bats fifth. The DH, Brandon Ponce, is in the sixth spot. He'll be followed by Cole Kramer, the third baseman. Logan Johnson, the center fielder. And Crew Park, the second baseman. Wyatt Halverson, right-handed pitcher, gets the start for the Sun Devils with a 2.92 ERA. This will be his ninth appearance of the season. Uh, in the field for the Sun Devils, Ryan Campos behind the dish, Jacob Tobias at first, Ethan Mendoza at second, Steven Ondina at third, Mario Demera at third, I'm sorry, Steven Ondina at short, Demera at third. Your right fielder is Josiah Cromwick, center fielder Nick McLean, and le left fielder Harris Williams. First pitch to Max Hartman is in there for a strike. Hartman showing bunt there briefly before pulling bat back. And Hartman batting 364 on the year. Here is the next pitch on the way to the Cougar leadoff man, and that misses low for a ball one and one. Hartman does not have home run power, but I'll get you the rest of his numbers here in just a second. Here's the 1-1, one, one, and that is inside for a ball, ball two. I mentioned the 367 batting average. He's been getting on base at a 433 clip, slugging 422 for an OPS uh, outstanding of 855 on the season. Here is the 2-1 now from Halverson. Up high, ball three, it's three and one. Halverson, a high volume strikeout guy who's been mostly a reliever for the Sun Devils, but 21 strikeouts in 12 and a third innings pitch. Here's the 3-1 now to Hartman, and he walked him. Five-pitch walk, Hartman is on base to lead things off here for the Cougs in the bottom half of the first inning. And that brings up the shortstop, Kyle Russell, who made maybe the most important play of the entire ball game yesterday. The Sun Devils had the bases loaded, and Russell was able to turn a double play, snagging a line drive, and then whirling and throwing back to Crew Park at second to double off the runner there and help the Cougs get out of an inning. Here's the first pitch to Russell in there for a strike on the outside corner to the right-handed batter for an 0-1 count. Kyle, 266 on the season, one home run, nine RBIs, but his value comes mostly with his glove in the field. Takes one, a strike at the knees at 91 miles per hour for strike two, it's 0-2.
Russell out of Curtis High School in University Place, right near Tacoma there. 0-2 pitch on the way. That one is driven into right field. Back on it is Cromwick near the wall. Off the wall! And it is Hartman going to third, and Russell will cruise into second base. Again, I talked about that win to right. That ball just kept on carrying. I think Cromwick thought he was going to make the catch at the warning track. Instead, it caromed off the top of the wall, and Russell's got a double here. And quickly, the Cougs are in business with second and third with nobody out. And that's going to bring up Kaysen Taggart, who homered in the series opener on Friday night. And the big lefty leads this team in home runs with six on the season. First pitch from Halverson up high. Campos did a good job to come out of his crouch to snag it and not let it go back to the backstop. 1-0. Next pitch to Taggart on the way. Just catches the outside corner of the plate for strike one. Taggart, six foot six, 221 pounder. He's a big kid out of Everett, Washington. Played at Centralia College the past two seasons. He's been putting up big numbers in his first year here with the Kooks. Here's the one one on the way. That one just misses the outside corner. So it's ball two, two and one here to Taggart. He was a Juco All-American last year with eight home runs and nine stolen bases for Centralia. Here is the 2-1 delivery swung on and fouled back and out of play. And the count goes even here at 2-2. Two and two. Homer twice in Tuesday's win over Seattle U and scored twice in both of those wins over Seattle U. Big spot here for Casey Taggart early in this ballgame, a chance to drive in a couple of runs. The 2-2 delivery from Halverson swung on and hit into left field, but that's going to be foul. Just going to squirt into the Cougar bullpen there, and the count remains even here at 2-2. Two two. Thought it had a chance to maybe get down into the corner off the bat, but it kept tailing and tailing away into the bullpen. All right, Halverson, the right-hander, sets. Here's the 2-2 delivery to the left-hander, Taggart. Breaking ball at the stomach for strike three. Taggart caught looking. That happened a couple of times in yesterday's ball game for him. And the Cougs have one down here now in the first. Nice pitch by Halverson. Kind of fooled Taggart on that one. And Joey Kramer now comes to the plate for the first time here today. Kramer outstanding for the Cougs last night. He was the hitting star going four for four with a home run and two runs batted in. First pitch to Kramer. A little bit low for ball one. It's one and out. Kramer out of Rohnert Park, California. 360 on the year. Five home runs and 18 runs batted in. Here's the 0-1 now, fouled back into the netting behind home plate. Big cut on the 91 mile per hour fastball. Kramer played two seasons at uh, Cal State Northridge. He's a graduate transfer, so he's already got a degree in marketing. Here's the 1-1 to Kramer. Just misses low, two and one now. Runners at second and third for the Cougs here with one out in the first inning. 2-1 to Kramer, big swing and a miss for strike two. It's two and two. Hartman led things off with a walk. Kyle Russell followed with a double off the wall in right. And after a strikeout from Taggart, Kramer will have a chance to drive in a pair. Here's the 2-2 from Halverson. Outside ball three. Count goes full at three and two. 19 pitches thrown already here for Wyatt Halverson in the first inning. Halverson takes a look back at second. Now the 3-2 delivery. Kramer puts it on the ground, but foul just past the Cougar dugout up the left field side. 
beg your pardon. All right, Kramer taps the mound and gets ready. Halverson sets at the pitcher's mound, looks back to second, and here's the 3-2 again to Kramer, swung on and fouled back out of play, this time down the right field side, back toward the where they're building the indoor practice facility here at Washington State. A lot of steel already been constructed on that uh, construction site there. All right, Halverson looks back at second again. Here's the 3-2 again to Kramer. Breaking ball, got him looking, strike three. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Halverson and the Cougs do not want to squander this opportunity with second and third here in the first. Halverson has shown a willingness to go to the off-speed pitch there with two strikes. And he's gotten Taggart and Kramer with it in back-to-back -back appearances. Here's the catcher, Jacob Morrow. He also homered in Friday's series opener. First pitch to him is at 86 over the plate for a strike. All right, here comes the 0-1 now to Morrow. Swung on and laced up the line and into the left field corner. One run is going to score. Two runs are going to score. And Morrow is going to cruise into second base with a stand-up two-run double as the Cougs take their first lead of the ball game here in the bottom of the first at 2-1. to one. A nice job of hitting by the catcher Morrow there again. Just slid it past the third baseman, Demera. Passes outstretched glove and into the left field corner. A big, big two-run double here for Morrow in the bottom of the first. And after back-to-back -back strikeouts from Halverson, you thought the Cougs might squander that opportunity, but Morrow says not so fast. First pitch here to Brandon Ponce is fouled back and out of play. The Federal Way native is starting in at the DH spot, I should say, here for the Cougs here today. Still looking for his first hit on the year, though, is Ponce. And he fouls that one away, so quickly behind in the count here at 0-2. Ponce batted 222 last year in 27 at bats for the Cougs. A look back at Morrow at second. And now the 0-2 delivery to Ponce. Fouled back into the netting. Again, he stays alive as the count remains at 0-2. As I'm looking out at puddles here on the, uh, the walkway through Bailey Brayton Field, looks like the rain has let up quite a bit and is maybe down to just a little bit of a sprinkle here. Here's the 0-2 to Ponce. Swung on and chopped to the third baseman, Demera, who's going to toss over to first on a hop to the first baseman, Tobias, in time to get Ponce, and the side is retired. But not before the Cougs get two runs off the two-run double from catcher Jacob Morrow. We go to the top half of the second. After this, this is Washington State Baseball from Learfield. Hey Cougs, life doesn't stop at retirement. Bishop Place has a wide range of activities, social events, and fitness options depending on your interests. We have many options to explore depending on the level of care you need. Bishop Place also has housekeeping, dining, and transportation services. Less worry, less chores, more life, and more choices. Visit us on the web at bishopplace.net or call to schedule your tour today. 509-334-9488. We can't wait to see you. That to-do list you have needs one more thing. Chill. It's an easy thing to do. Just crack open an ice-cold Coors Light and chill. Take the afternoon off and binge watch anything. Go to happy hour and stay for a couple hours. Who's counting anyways? Or hang out with just your dog because you've had enough human interaction this week. Whatever you do, do it with a Coors Light. Mountain cold refreshment made to chill. 2024 Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Celebrate responsibly. All right, 
right, welcome back to Bailey Brayton Field. We are through one inning here in this series finale between your Washington State Cougars and the visiting Arizona State Sun Devils. The Cougs just took a two to one lead on a two run double off the bat of catcher Jacob Morrow in the bottom half of the inning. And now to lead things off in the second, Spencer Jones will face the third baseman Cole Kramer. The center fielder, Logan, or excuse me, that is the Cougar lineup, part, I beg your pardon. He'll be facing the right fielder, Josiah Cromwick, the third baseman, Mario Demera, and the shortstop, Steven Ondina. And Cromwick, this is our first look at him so far in this series. And Spencer Jones starts him off with the ball. In a righty versus righty matchup here. Next pitch is swung on and belted high into the air. But that's going to land somewhere near the Cougar bullpen out there in left field. Here's the 1-1 out of Cromwick. Fouled back toward the wall behind home plate and Jones now ahead of the count for the first time here against Cromwick at one and two. Cromwick batting 167 on the year in limited action. This is his 11th appearance and his fifth start of the year for the Sun Devils. Here's the one two put on the ground to the third baseman Kramer. He's going to throw across the inbid field. One hops it to Joey Kramer for the out. And the leadoff man is down here in the first. Cole Kramer, cool customer on that one. Very casual, and the long throw across gets there in time. That brings up the third baseman, Mario Demera, batting 091 on the year. He's also played sparingly for the Sun Devils this season. This is his 10th appearance and his seventh start, just two hits in 22 at bats on the season. First pitch to Demera high and outside, ball one. Next pitch on the way, swung on and chopped to Kramer again, and he fires across the infield. Another one hopper to Kramer and is in there in time. Almost a carbon copy of the uh, first at bat there, and too quickly, two outs here in the second. Hey, earn your bragging rights at Northern Quest with more slot machines, table games, restaurants, lounges, and luxury hotel rooms than anyone else in the region. Northern Quest, yes, the best. More at northernquest.com. All right, so after back-to-back -back ground outs, 5-3 on each of the putouts, it brings up Steven Ondina, the shortstop. And Jones starts him off with a strike. Ondina batting 288 on the year. Here's the next pitch from Jones. Down low, ball one. Now, Ondina started Friday's series opener at short. He was on the bench for yesterday's game to start it, but Jax Ryan injured himself trying to make a diving stab, and Ondina came in early in that ball game and played most of the ball game for the Sun Devils. A swing and a miss at the third pitch there from Jones, so it's now one and two. Ondina is out of Puerto Rico originally. That pitch down in the dirt, ball two. One and two. And Ondina actually started his collegiate career at Florida International before transferring to ASU. The 2-2 two -two to Jones, chance to get out of the inning, one, two, three, and he does it with a breaking ball at 83 miles an hour, freezes on Dina, and will go to the bottom half of the second with the Kooks still leading two to one. Hey Cougs, life doesn't stop at retirement. Bishop Place has a wide range of activities, social events, and fitness options depending on your interests. We have many options to explore depending on the level of care you need. Bishop Place also has housekeeping, dining, and transportation services. Less worry, less chores, more life, and more choices. Visit us on the web at bishopplace.net or call to schedule your tour today. 509-334-9488. We can't wait to see you. 
A lot goes into Washington State athletes reaching peak performance for game day, including the right nutrition. At Wilbur Ellis, we know that healthy crop performance requires the same attention to nutrition as an athlete. That's why we use benchmark data points to maximize crop productivity through nutrient efficiency. For 100 years, family-owned Wilbur Ellis has been partnering with Washington's farmers to grow healthier crops. That is the winning ag experience for Cougar Nation, locally provided by Wilbur Ellis. All right, Washington State leads it 2-1 to one as we start play here in the bottom half of the second inning. Spencer Jones has thrown 38 pitches so far for Washington State, 22 of them strikes. Uh, he allowed one run, but it was not earned, and he has now struck out two after freezing Stephen Ondina uh, with an off-speed pitch, a changeup to end the inning there. And as we begin the... Bottom half of the second, the Cougs will start things off with the third baseman, Cole Kramer, who had back-to-back -back putouts in the top half of the second. He'll be followed by the center fielder, Logan Johnstone, and the second baseman, Crew Park. Halverson's first pitch to Kramer catches the outside corner against the right-handed hitter for a strike. Kramer, originally from Arlington, Washington, on the west side of the state, played at Lynn Benton Community College before making his way to WSU, swung on and belted up the middle off the pitcher's mound, took a weird hop, but then right to the second baseman, Mendoza, who fires over to first in time to record the out. That was hit fairly hard, but bounced off the mound right in front of Halverson's feet and then bounce right to the second baseman, Mendoza, who is playing shaded way over towards the second base bag against the right-handed hitter. All right, so that brings up Logan Johnstone now, the center fielder here today. And chops one foul back toward the netting behind home plate. Johnstone out of Los Gatos, California. Played the last two years at Gonzaga. Johnstone making his sixth appearance and just his second start of the year for the Cougs. That pitch outside, ball one, one and one. Johnstone's only recorded one official at bat on the year. Here's the one and one. That hit him. Got him on the shin or the knee area. But Johnstone will take his base. And interestingly, he scored three runs despite having just one official at bat. He's, he's walked earlier in the season, come around to score, and I guess has probably been used as a pinch runner a couple of times as well. So a one-out walk, one-out hit by pitch, I should say, for Johnstone, and that brings up the second baseman, Crew Park. Park batting 250 on the year. Not a home run threat. He hasn't hit one yet this year. He squares to bunt and then pulls the bat back, but it's in there for a strike 0 and 1. Cougs will look to advance the runner if they can. And Johnson has stolen one base already this season. Halverson with a peek over to first and now throws over to first, but back in time is Johnstone. A cold, windy, and rainy day here in Pullman. The Cougs with a 2-1 to one lead in the bottom of the second. Here's the 0-1 delivery that's lifted into shallow right field. Cromwick is on it and underneath for the second out of the inning. And Johnstone will head back to first base. So Crew Park flies out to right, and that brings up the leadoff man for the Cougs here today. And Max Hartman with two outs. Hartman with 33 hits in his 90 at-bats here so far this year. Johnstone takes off for second. Here comes a throw. It goes into center field. 
And Johnstone, not enough time to get back on his feet and head to third, but still a stolen base for Johnstone puts a runner in scoring position now for Max Hartman. We haven't seen as many stolen base attempts as we probably expected to see from the Cougars in this series because they have shown a willingness to swipe a bag when possible. So Halverson looks back at second, now delivers to Hartman off speed in there for a strike. It's 0-2, 78 miles per hour on that pitch from Halverson. On deck is Russell if the Coos can get to him. Had the double in the first. Here's the 0-2 delivery to Hartman outside, ball one. Hartman is 364 on the year with runners in scoring position. Let's see if he can come through again now. The one-two pitch to Hartman. Swung on and through the hole into left field for a base hit. Johnstone rounding third. He's going to test the arm and the throw is up the line and will not get there. So the stolen base leads to a two-out RBI single from Hartman and the Cougs extend their lead to two. It's now three to one. The left fielder, Williams, was on that single in a hurry, but Johnstone, with his speed, was going to test him, and the throw was not very accurate from Williams, and that allowed him to score easily. So 3-1 to one Cougs now here in the bottom of the second. Remember, they're going for a sweep of ASU here today, which would put them above 500 in the Pac-12 for the first time since winning their series opener, their very first Pac-12 game against Utah a couple of weeks ago. Pitch to Russell is fouled back toward the Cougar dugout. Nice snag by somebody in the Cougar dugout over there. And the count is 0-1 to Russell. Butch standing right behind home plate, maybe trying to taunt the ASU pitcher a little bit as he's waving the bat in the air and shaking his tail a little bit. Throw over to first, not in time to get Hartman. Everybody will reset here. And the 0-1 delivery. Instead, another throw there over to first. Hartman back in time. All right, Halverson sets. Here's the 0-1 to Russell. Swung on and lifted into right field again. This is back towards the wall again. And it's off the wall again. Russell's going to have extra bases again. Rounding third and heading for home is Hartman. And Russell has a stand-up RBI triple. Back-to-back -back doubles off the right field wall for Kyle Russell. And he's given the Cougs a 4-1 lead here in the bottom of the second inning. How about that? Hartman had no trouble coming all the way around to score. And Russell scoots into third base easily. Cougs with two runs in the first, two runs now here in the second, all of them coming with two outs. Here's Kaysen Taggart. First pitch, a ball to Taggart. And now the 1-0 delivery outside, ball two. So going to be a favorable count here for the Cougars left fielder. Taggart taps home plate, gets ready for the 2-0 pitch on the way now from Halverson. Swung on and fouled up the left field line. And there is already some activity in the Sun Devils bullpen. All right, Halverson sets. Here's the 2-1 now to Taggart. He was taken, and it's in there for a strike, 89 miles per hour at the knee. So the count is now even here at 2-2 two and two, with two outs in the bottom of the second inning. 
two runs already across the plate here for the Cougs. The 2-2 two -two to Taggart. Swung on and fouled at the left field line again. That's two that he's fouled off the fencing in the Cougars' bullpen there in this at-bat. Right, Taggart taps the plate again. He's ready for the 2-2 pitch here from Halverson. Checked his swing. Third base umpire says he did not go around, and the ball was down to the dirt, so the count goes full here at 3-2. and two. All right, Halverson sets. Here comes the 3-2 delivery to Kaysen Taggart. Swung on and chopped foul back towards the ASU dugout, and we'll do it again here at 3-2. and two. Four one Cougs here in the bottom of the second inning. Pitch on the way to Taggart. Swung on and chopped up the middle right to the shortstop on Dina, who takes it on a hop, fires over to first, and the side is retired, but not before the Coos get two more runs here in the second. They take a 4-1 to one lead in the top of the third after this. The Clearwater River Casino and Lodge proudly supports Washington State University Athletics. The premier venue for events and entertainment located four miles east of Lewiston, Idaho. Come hit the jackpot with us with over 600 gaming machines, saltwater pool, restaurant, and giant screens in the stadium sports bar. Owned and operated by the Nez Perce Tribe, our hospitality is legendary. Stay, play, and get away with the Clearwater River Casino. Go Cooks! Boost Collaborative is a proud sponsor of Cougar Basketball and is a proud supporter of people with disabilities on the Palouse. For over 50 years, Boost Collaborative has been here to help families and their toddlers meet developmental milestones. For youth and adults, Boost provides job placement, on-the-job training, and follow-along supports. Now you can play a part in Boost's success through your donations and purchases at Palouse Treasures Thrift Store in Pullman. Boost Collaborative, empowering people with disabilities on the Palouse. Go Cougs! This copyrighted broadcast is an exclusive presentation of Learfield under the broadcasting rights granted by Washington State University. Reuse of this presentation is prohibited without the expressed written consent of Washington State University and Learfield. Announcers are provided by Learfield and approved by Washington State University. All right, we are ready for baseball here in the top of the third inning now. Cooch with a 4-1 to one lead over Arizona State and... We will begin the third with the top of the Sun Devils order, Harris Williams, Nick McClain, and Ryan Campos. Williams tried to lay down a bunt there, but missed it, and it's in there for strike one. The left fielder batting 320 on the year. Here's the next pitch from Jones. Swing and a miss at a breaking ball in there at 83 miles per hour. That's the changeup. Here now, the 0-2 delivery from Jones on the way. Swing and a miss again. The change up again, and he fooled Williams for another strikeout and quickly one down here for the Cougs in the third. Third strikeout so far for Spencer Jones. He comes 89 to 91 with the fastball. The slider about 76 or 77, and then that change up in the low 80s. Here's the first pitch to Nick McLean. The changeup again at 83 misses, though. It's 1-0. Nick McLean lined out back in the first, but he's been a tough out for the Cougs in this series. Another ball from Jones, and it's 2-0. The 2-0 delivery on the way now. Swung on and fouled up the right field line. Going to be into the Sun Devils' bullpen. A couple of relief pitchers have to go ducking out of the way of that one. 
The wind is still blowing here in Pullman, and now it's instead of blowing kind of northeast, it's almost more southeast now. And that fastball catches the inside corner against the right-hand hitter for strike two. So after being behind 0-2, Jones is now even the count. And now goes into his windup for the 2-2 pitch. Swung on and lifted into right field. Hartman is going to be underneath it and will make the catch for out number two. And that's going to bring up the catcher, Ryan Campos. Jones now at 46 pitches here so far in this ball game. And Nathan Choate said he'd love to get four or five innings out of Jones here today before giving away to the bullpen. Here's the first pitch to Ryan Campos up high, ball one. Jones has thrown as many as 91 pitches. That came in a win against Rhode Island back on March the 2nd. He's also thrown 81, 75, 68, and 57. Campos lays off a pitch outside, ball two, 2-0. Two Campos does have a team leading six home runs for the Sun Devils. Here's the 2-0 delivery, swung on and lifted high in the air, almost straight up. Morrow with the mask off, now moves into foul territory and can't make the play. The wind really, I think, messed with that. And also, Morrow stepped on the bat that was dropped by Campos as he tried to make it, and it landed just behind his head. So a chance for the third out there squandered, and we hope that it won't come back to bite Jones and the Cougs here in the third. Tough play there for Morrow, though. Again, with this wind kind of blowing, as I just mentioned, towards the southeast here, had a difficult time dealing with it. So the 2-1 now to Campos, and that is laced into left field. Taggart on the run, makes the catch right in front of the scoreboard. At six foot six with those long legs, he can make up a lot of ground in a hurry. And that's the second straight day where he's made a running catch out there in left field. The side is retired. We're back with the bottom of the third after this. Cougs leading the Sun Devils four to one. It's time to bring the big game to your backyard with spring savings on steel. Our AK Homeowner System battery tools start at just $199.99. Find yours at over 10,000 local dealers. Steel is a proud supporter of your Washington State Cougars. Real Steel. Find yours. All prices SNW SRP. Hey Cougs, life doesn't stop at retirement. Bishop Place has a wide range of activities, social events, and fitness options depending on your interests. We have many options to explore depending on the level of care you need. Bishop Place also has housekeeping, dining, and transportation services. Less worry, less chores, more life, and more choices. Visit us on the web at bishopplace.net or call to schedule your tour today. 509-334-9488. We can't wait to see you. All right, Wyatt Halverson, the Arizona State starting pitcher, remains on the mound here to start the bottom of the third inning. He has thrown 49 pitches already, given up four hits and four earned runs, two strikeouts and one walk. But three of the four Cougar hits so far have been of the extra base variety, two doubles and a triple. One of those doubles and that triple coming courtesy of the Cougar shortstop, Kyle Russell here today, who's already had a terrific day. All right, the final warm-up toss has been thrown and coming up to lead things off for the Cougs in the third will be the first baseman, Joey Kramer. He'll be followed by the catcher, Jacob Morrow, and the designated hitter today in Brandon Ponce. Kramer, 356 on the year so far. Last year batted 263 for Cal State Northridge, eight home runs on the year. And he takes a fastball outside for ball one. O-1 delivery now to Kramer, down low. And 
count goes to, oh, I beg your pardon. I thought that uh, the first pitch from Halverson was a strike. It was a ball, actually, so it's 2-0. Oh. So a hitter's count here now for Kramer. Pitch on the way from Halverson, and it is ripped, but into, uh, boy, where they're grilling burgers, and there's a whole line of fans waiting for some food. <laughs> Maybe didn't realize the danger with their back to the action. 2-1 and one now here to Kramer. He struck out in his first at bat back in the first. Here's the pitch from Halverson. Just high, ball three. So three and one here to Cougar first baseman Joey Kramer. We've played about 50 minutes here in Pullman. Here's the 3-1 delivery swung on and lifted into center field. McLean with his back towards it to the wall, and it goes over the wall. A solo home run for Joey Kramer. That's two straight days where he's left the yard for the Cougs, and he's now tied for the team lead in home runs on the season with six. That ball was well struck. McLean didn't have a chance on it as he just watched it sail over the center field fence, and the Cougs now lead it by a count of five to one. And out of the dugout is Willie Bloomquist, and this might be the end of the road here for Halverson. He takes the ball from his starting pitcher, who gave up five earned runs in two-plus innings. We're going to have a pitching change. Let's take a break, and we'll tell you who's coming in for the Devils after this. The Clearwater River Casino and Lodge proudly supports Washington State University Athletics. The premier venue for events and entertainment located four miles east of Lewiston, Idaho. Come hit the jackpot with us with over 600 gaming machines, saltwater pool, restaurant, and giant screens in the stadium sports bar. Owned and operated by the Nez Perce Tribe, our hospitality is legendary. Stay, play, and get away with the Clearwater River Casino. Go Cougs! That to-do list you have needs one more thing. Chill. It's an easy thing to do. Just crack open an ice-cold Coors Light and chill. Take the afternoon off and binge watch anything. Go to happy hour and stay for a couple hours. Who's counting anyways? Or hang out with just your dog because you've had enough human interaction this week. Whatever you do, do it with a Coors Light. Mountain cold refreshment made to chill. 2024 Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Celebrate responsibly. All right, Matthew Tiding will be the next pitcher into the ball game for Arizona State. And before we tell you about him, why don't we pause 10 seconds for stations to identify themselves here on the Washington State Sports Network from Learfield. <laughs> Matthew Tiding is a senior right-handed pitcher. He goes six foot four, 225 pounds. He's originally from Fort Worth, Texas, and came to ASU via San Jacinto College. On the season, Tiding a 5.56 ERA. This will be his 10th appearance. He has pitched 11 and a third innings, allowed 16 hits, nine runs, seven of them earned. He has six strikeouts against three walks. Opposing batters batting 302 against him on the year. And Tiding will be facing Jacob Morrow to start things off. And he'll be followed by Brandon Ponce and Cole Kramer after the solo home run by Joey Kramer, his sixth of the year, which gave the Cougs a 5 to 1 lead here in the third. Now, Morrow. Actually had a two-run double back in the first inning to open the scoring for the Cougs. First pitch at 88 miles per hour is outside for a ball. Here's the next pitch now from Teeting. Swung on and lifted high into the air. Underneath it is the second baseman Mendoza, now called off by the shortstop Ondina in second base territory. But the first out recorded here for Tiding and the Sun Devils. And that brings up the designated hitter, Brandon Ponce now. Ponce actually 
played at Big Bend Community College, which is right up the road from where I grew up in Moses Lake. And starts them off with a fastball in the outside corner at 89 miles per hour. Ponso originally out of Federal Way. Next pitch, shot back into the Cougar dugout, and the count is now 0 and 2. It's actually a 2022 JUCO All-American third team, and the NWAC East Region MVP when he hit 339 with six homers and 42 RBI. Still looking for his first hit on the year here, though, for the Cougs. That's outside. Ball one, one and two. One, two on the way, gets away from the catcher. You always hear it loudly when it hits the uh, wall behind home plate because that's where our field mic is usually set up. Uh, Ponce grounded out to back in the first inning, and that one is lifted foul and out of play. So the count will stay at two and two. This is the third start and the ninth appearance on the year for Ponce. And he's hitless in 11 at bats on the season, which just means he's due, right? Would be a good time for him to get off the schneid. Here comes the 2-2 delivery. Ponce swing and a miss for strike three. And the Cougs now with two outs here in the frame after that solo homer to lead things off by Joey Kramer. And that brings up the other Kramer in the lineup, Cole Kramer. Of course, Cole's last name is spelt with a C. Joey's is Kramer with a K. Here's the first pitch to Cole outside. Ball one. Teeting starting off with a lot of fastballs here. That one at 88 miles per hour. Here comes the 1-0 delivery to Kramer, and that is lifted into right field. That's going to get down for a base hit. So a two-out single for Cole Kramer, and the Cougs are still alive here in the bottom of the third. And that's going to bring up Logan Johnstone. Another Coug who is uh, in need of a base hit, especially just to help the confidence. Teeting looks in, now the first pitch to Johnstone, a swing and a miss, might have got a little piece of that one. Johnstone was hit by a pitch back in the first and actually came around to score. Throw over to first, back in time is Kramer. Quick throw back over to first again. Well, you can hear in that crowd, Mike, the wind really picked up again and is starting to really whip through the stadium here. Teeting looks over to first, now comes with a 1-0 pitch to Johnstone. Outside and low, ball one. Cougs have scored at every inning here so far. Two in the first, two in the second, and one so far here in the third. They lead it 5-1 to one over Arizona State. Another move to first and back in time is Kramer again. The one now to one oh now to Johnstone. One one I should say. Outside ball two. Teeting. 
took a lot of time and then threw over to first again with only two seconds left on the pitch clock. Remember, that's something that you got to deal with now in uh, today's baseball. It's already at eight here on the next pitch for Teething. And he throws high to Johnstone for ball three. So three and one, hitters count. You can even see the wind on the player's loose clothing blowing a little bit as it's really picked up here. 3-1 count now to Johnstone. Pitch on the way. Outside, ball four. Kramer was taken off, but won't be needed because of the two-out walk. So the Cougs get the leadoff homer from Kramer. A pop out and a strikeout from Morrow and Ponce, but now a single by Kramer and a walk by Johnstone. Puts a runner back in scoring position here with two outs in the frame. And out of the dugout for a chat with the pitcher is the ASU pitching coach. Doesn't look like they're making a move, but perhaps just tell them to settle things down and buckle down and get this last out. Cougs lead it five to one here in the third. While they're meeting on the mound, I'll tell you that Pullman Regional Hospital and Washington State University Athletics are partners in excellence. As the official hospital of Washington State University Athletics, Pullman Regional Hospital provides quality care and support to over 500 student athletes. Let the team that takes care of the Cougs take care of you. Go Cougs. All right, the pitching coach is heading back to the dugout and Crew Park is heading back into the batter's box here to face Teeting. And that's put on the ground, but to the shortstop on Dina, who've tried to fire to third, and it is over the head of the third baseman, Demera, and everybody is safe. A curious decision there by Andina to try to get the leadoff man at third with two outs. I think he could have just fired over to first and probably had Crew Park pretty easily. He opted to go to third, and the mistake could prove to be costly if Max Hartman can come through here in the clutch for the Cougs. First pitch to Hartman is in there for a strike. So they are calling that a throwing error by the shortstop on Dina. And the Cougs now have the bases loaded here with two outs. That pitch was missed outside to Hartman, and it's now one and one. So Hartman has reached base twice already in this ball game. He walked and scored in the first, singled and scored back in the second. And here he is with the bases loaded. Pitch on the way. Driven into the gap in left center field. Is it going to hang up or is it going to get down? And making a catch is McLean. He overran it into the gap and then reached back behind him to make the third out of the inning. Otherwise, that would have scored two and perhaps even three. Nonetheless, the Cougs get one more here in the frame. They lead the Sun Devils 5-1 to one through three innings played here in Pullman. Boost Collaborative is a proud sponsor of Cougar Basketball and is a proud supporter of people with disabilities on the Palouse. For over 50 years, Boost Collaborative has been here to help families and their toddlers meet developmental milestones. For youth and adults, Boost provides job placement, on-the-job training, and follow-along supports. Now you can play a part in Boost's success through your donations and purchases at Palouse Treasures Thrift Store in Pullman. Boost Collaborative, empowering people with disabilities on the Palouse. Go Cougs! Which schools will take home the prestigious Learfield Directors Cup for the 2023-24 college athletic season? You can follow the standings of your favorite school or alma mater at L Directors Cup on Twitter and online at thedirectorscup.com. That's thedirectorscup.com and L Directors Cup on Twitter. Trophies will be awarded in June 2024 to the winning institutions in all competitive divisions. Learfield Directors Cup, the crowning achievement in college athletics.
right, welcome back to Bailey Brayton Field. We are getting ready for the top of the fourth inning here, and Spencer Jones remains out there on the mound for the Cougs, who has been pretty darn good through three innings here so far. He's allowed just two hits, one run that was not earned. He struck out three and has not walked anybody yet. He's thrown 51 pitches so far. Leading things off for the Sun Devils is Jacob Tobias, and he takes up high for ball one on a fastball at 89. Tobias struck out in his only at bat back in the first inning. Next pitch on the way here from Jones, and is fouled back and out of play. Jones, after giving up one run back in the first, has now retired seven consecutive batters. Here's the 1-1 one -one now to Tobias. That's, oh, just missed, I guess. Awfully close on the outside corner against the left-handed hitting Tobias. First baseman for the Sun Devils with four home runs on the season. That one is fouled back and out of play again, and the count goes even at 2-2. Two and two. The 2-2 now from Spencer, and that is lifted into shallow center field. Park is back. Johnstone converging, but making the play is the right fielder, Hartman. Three Cougs converging on that ball, and the right fielder makes the furthest run, but makes the catch for the first out of the inning, and that's eight straight retired now for Jones. All right, Ethan Mendoza now at the plate here for the Sun Devils. And Jones starts him off with the ball just low. The rain does look like it's picked back up again here in Pullman. Mendoza has uh, not recorded it out since Friday. That one skips past the catcher Morrow back to the backstop and it's 2-0. and oh. Mendoza was four for four in yesterday's game and then had a double back in the first inning. Here comes the 2-0 now in there for a strike. Mendoza one for four on Friday, four for four last night and one and one here today. And that one is chopped foul. Boy, hit hard off the Miller Indoor Baseball training facility and into the Sun Devils dugout. And yeah, the rain really coming down here again in the fourth inning. Here's the 2-2 to Mendoza. Down low, ball three. Count goes full at three and two. Next pitch on the way from Jones up high, and he lost him. So there goes the streak of eight consecutive batters retired by Jones. And the last guy to get on is the guy who gets on now here in Mendoza. All right, so Brandon Compton now at the plate. Checks his swing, but it's in there for a strike anyway. One and oh. Oh and one, excuse me. Jones now at 62 pitches. Here's the next one. That's outside. Ball one, one and one. Mendoza, not really a threat to run. He is 0 for 1 in the stolen base department on the season. Takes a look over to first, and now comes to the plate, and a strike at the knees. It's one and two now to Brandon Compton. Jones shakes off a signal from Morrow, now gets something he likes. Here's the one, two, outside, ball two. Go, 
Jones sets. Here's the 2-2 to Compton. Sketches the outside corner of the plate for strike three. Another strikeout for Jones, and we now have two outs here in the inning. Fourth strikeout so far for Spencer Jones. And that brings up Josiah Cromwick. First pitch to Cromwick is hit on the ground right to the shortstop, Russell. He's going to toss softly over to the second baseman, Park, and the side is retired. Spencer Jones hanging a lot of zeros on that scoreboard. We go to the bottom half of the fourth after this. It's 5-1, to one, Cougs. The Clearwater River Casino and Lodge proudly supports Washington State University Athletics. The premier venue for events and entertainment located four miles east of Lewiston, Idaho. Come hit the jackpot with us with over 600 gaming machines, saltwater pool, restaurant, and giant screens in the stadium sports bar. Owned and operated by the Nez Perce Tribe, our hospitality is legendary. Stay, play, and get away with the Clearwater River Casino. Go Cooks! It's time to bring the big game to your backyard with spring savings on steel. Our AK Homeowner System battery tools start at just $199.99. Find yours at over 10,000 local dealers. Steel is a proud supporter of your Washington State Cougars. Real steel. Find yours. All prices SNW SRP. All right, five to one, Washington State on a rainy day here in Pullman. Cougs leading the Sun Devils. They've scored two in the first, two in the second, and one in the third, and they're getting ready to come to the plate here in the bottom half of the fourth inning. If you're curious, top seeded Purdue in the NCAA basketball tournament leads eighth seed Utah State just 25 to 24 with about eight minutes left in the first half the Aggies of course coached by Montana playing and coaching legend Danny Sprinkle who's a Helena native who coached at Montana State and led the Bobcats to the NCAA tournament previously before taking this job in Logan at Utah State just this year we'll update you on some other Pac-12 scores when we can but only one other one is even underway at the moment, and that is Oregon and Arizona, scoreless through one in Eugene. Kyle Russell, who's been red hot today, will lead things off here in the fourth. First pitch to Russell, taken for a ball. And Russell doubled in the first and tripled in the second. And that one is hit to the third baseman who puts it on the ground, bobbles it, and Russell's gonna leg it out for a single. It was hit sharply right at Demera. He had the ball in his glove, dropped it. By the time he could pick it back up, he didn't have enough on the throw to get Russell, and so he reaches safely for the third time in this ball game. And again, we've seen some strange things happen here with you know wet field conditions and a wet ball, and I wonder if that might have been an issue for Demera on that one. They are going to call that a throwing error, so not a third hit in this ball game for Russell, but he'll take it being on base to lead things off. That brings up Case and Taggart. First pitch from Teeding outside ball one. Taggart struck out looking back in the first and then grounded out to end the second inning for the Cougs. Next pitch on the way, up high, ball two. Taggart was one for four and struck out twice in yesterday's game, but in Friday's series opener, he was two for five with a two-run homer as part of that big six-run fifth inning for the Cougs. Throw over to first, Russell back in time. Kyle does have three stolen bases on the season. Rain still coming down hard here in Pullman. The 2 0 on the way lifted high into center field. McLean is underneath it, and he'll make the play for the first out of the inning. Russell retreats back to the first base bag. 
And that's going to bring up Joey Kramer, who has homered in each of the last two ball games for Washington State. Yesterday's caught me off guard. I thought it looked like a fly ball to right field, but it just carried over the wall. And in his last at bat, it was crushed to center field, kind of no doubt about it. First pitch to Kramer. So I'm going to put on the ground through the hole and in the left field for a base hit. Russell, no chance to advance to third. So runners at first and second now for the Cougs with just one out here in the inning. Two for three now on the day for Joey Kramer. And that brings up Jacob Morrow with the chance to drive in some more runs. He's already driven in two with a double back in the first. That scored... Hartman and Russell. All right, Teeting looks back at second, now comes to the plate, off-speed pitch way up high near Morrow's head, and it's 1-0. and oh. Morrow the catcher out of Warrington, Oregon. Another Coug who played at Lynn Benton Community College. Here's the 1-0. And misses low and outside for ball two. Morrow's dad played baseball at Mesa Junior College in the San Diego area. Here comes the 2-0 now to the catcher. Off-speed in there for a strike, two and one. Teeting wheels around and will throw softly back to second base to chase Russell back to the bag. Cougs lead at 5-1 to one here in the fourth. They've got two men on with just one out trying to add to this lead against Arizona State. The 2-1 on the way. Morrow fouls one back toward the indoor practice facility construction site beyond the right field bleachers. A lot of umbrellas ha out here at the ballpark today on a rainy Sunday in Pullman. A look back at second. Here comes Teeting with the 2-2 tomorrow foul, backing out of play once again, and we'll do it again at 2-2. Two two. All right, Teeting sets, looks back at second, and... Still looking back at second. Now the 2-2 to Morrow. Swing and a miss for strike three. Morrow goes down swinging, and the Cougs are down to their final out here in the fourth. Brings up Brandon Ponce. Grounded out in the first. Struck out in the third. Love to see Ponce come through in a big way here to get his first hit of the season. Teeting starts him off with a ball way upstairs. Ponce, the righty, looks back toward the Cougar dugout. And here comes the 1-0. Swung on and chopped foul right in front of the plate. And it can't go as even here at 1-1. One one. Ponce, a good sized kid, six foot two, 235 pounds, out of Federal Way High School. The 1 1 now to Ponce. Swung on and chopped toward the third base bag. Demera fires all the way across the first for the third out. He just got him by about a half a step. Russell was running on contact, so he didn't have a chance to just step on the third base bag. Had to make the more difficult play across the infield, and he was able to do it. So Ponce grounds out to end the inning, and the Cougs, for the first time today, don't score in a frame. We go to the fifth after this, Washington State leading 4-1. to 5-1, to one, excuse me. 
Boost Collaborative is a proud sponsor of Cougar Basketball and is a proud supporter of people with disabilities on the Palouse. For over 50 years, Boost Collaborative has been here to help families and their toddlers meet developmental milestones. For youth and adults, Boost provides job placement, on-the-job training, and follow-along supports. Now you can play a part in Boost's success through your donations and purchases at Palouse Treasures Thrift Store in Pullman. Boost Collaborative, empowering people with disabilities on the Palouse. Go Cougs! A lot goes into Washington State athletes reaching peak performance for game day, including the right nutrition. At Wilbur Ellis, we know that healthy crop performance requires the same attention to nutrition as an athlete. That's why we use benchmark data points to maximize crop productivity through nutrient efficiency. For 100 years, family-owned Wilbur Ellis has been partnering with Washington's farmers to grow healthier crops. That is the winning ag experience for Cougar Nation, locally provided by Wilbur Ellis. head coach Nathan Choate told me in the pregame he'd love to see Spencer Jones give him four or five innings in this one. He's already given him four. He's back out there for the fifth. And why not? He has been awfully good through four, allowed just two hits, one run. It was not earned. He struck out four, walked only one, and thrown 67 pitches. Here's things to lead off the fifth against Mario Demera. He squared the bunt and Bunted it foul back toward the ASU dugout. Demera grounded out in his only at bat back in the second inning. Next pitch on the way is a fastball up high for ball one, one and one. Steven Andino would be up next, followed by the left fielder Harris Williams. The one one now to Demera inside. Ball two, two and one. Jones with a 2-1 pitch on the way outside, ball three, three and one. Tamara batting 0 91, excuse me, 0 87 now on the season. Here's the 3 1, just catches the upper outside corner of the strike zone for strike two. It's three and two. The 3 2 pitch to Tamara. Fouled, backing out of play. Oh, off the lights there in the right field foul territory. And Hartman's going to have to chase it down as it comes back into play. All right, the 3-2 again here to Demera. Just got a piece of it to stay alive in the at-bat. Demero with just two hits on the season in 23 at bats for the Sun Devils. The 3 2 again from Jones swung on and lined back up the middle. And no sooner than I said only two hits, he gets his third, a leadoff single here in the fifth. Blame that one on the broadcaster, I guess. And that's going to bring up Steven Ondina, the shortstop. So Jones now at 75 pitches in this ball game. I mentioned he has gone as many as 91 in a game this year. He did throw an inning against Seattle U earlier in the week, and he starts to, uh, on Dina off with a strike on a breaking ball there at 77 miles an hour on the slider. All right, the 0-1 now. Lifted into shallow right field. Hartman's got a ways to go for it. This could land in foul territory. It does, but Hartman's underneath it for the out. So first out of the inning recorded on the foul out by Andina. Demera has to remain at first, and that's going to bring up Harris Williams, the left fielder. Singled and scored back in the first, struck out in the third. First pitch from Jones, outside, checked his swing, but did not go around. Right 
Jones looks over to first, now comes to the plate, chopped back to the infield. Park's got a glove on it. He tags the runner, Demera, between first and second base, but no time to catch uh, Williams before he reaches first. So Williams reaches on the fielder's choice, but Demera is cut down between first and second. There's two outs in the inning. Nice job there by Crew Park. I tell you what, the Cougars, middle infielders, Park and Russell are as solid as you could ask for at the collegiate level. All right, so here's Nick McClain, a throw over to first, though, and that chases Williams back to the back. And just a few minutes ago, the rain was coming down awfully hard, and it looks like it's let up again here. That pitch to McLean catches the top outside corner again for strike one. So the players and fans here in Bailey Braden getting a little bit of a break from that rain. Another throw over to first. Wind is still blowing, though. It is not a warm day here in Pullman, to say the least. Right now, my phone telling me it's 40 degrees which is exactly where it was at when we started this ball game about an hour and 25 minutes ago. The 0-1 now put on the ground, but chopped foul up the third base line. And the count goes to 0-2 against Nick McClain. McClain 0 for 2 today. Lined out in the first and flew out in the third. Here comes the 0-2 from Jones. Down low, Morrow keeps it in front and keeps the runner at bay. All right, Jones now sets for the one two to McLean and said he'll throw over to first. Back easily is Williams. who does have six stolen bases on the year and a 75% success rate when he decides to take off. The one, two to McLean. Outside, ball two. All right, Jones sets, takes a look at first. And now comes to the plate against McLean, who lifts one into right field. Hartman with a long way to run for it. And he lunges but dives and can't make the play. It would have landed. It did land just foul, I should say. But Hartman had a chance to make a spectacular running play. He just couldn't quite get there. And he actually goes sliding into the fence right in front of the ASU bullpen. Long way to run on that one. But Hartman turned on the Jets and almost made a spectacular play. All right, so Jones will reset again here with a 2-2 count still against Nick McLean. Here comes the delivery. Swung on and hit into the left field corner. Fair just over the glove of Kramer. Rounding second and heading for third. And now heading home is Williams. And he'll score on the stand-up two-out double as ASU cuts into the lead and makes it 5-2 to two now here in the fifth. Williams scored easily all the way from first base. That ball was hit hard over the outstretched glove of Cole Kramer there at third. And the Sun Devils suddenly breathing a bit of life here at five to two. And here's Ryan Campos. Swing and a miss at the first pitch, a changeup from Jones at 85 miles an hour. Jones now at 86 pitches. He'd love to record one more out here for the Cougs. Looks back at second. Now comes to the dish, and that is poked into left center field. That's going to score another one. Johnson with a long way to run to get to it. McLean scores easily, and it's back-to-back -back doubles here for the Sun Devils. 
who now pull within two at five to three. Jones clearly starting to tire a little bit here in the fifth. He was cruising through the second, third, and fourth innings, but has now given up three hits, two of them doubles. Nathan Choate out of the bullpen, or excuse me, the dugout here for the Cougs, and this is probably going to do it for the Cougar starting pitcher, Spencer Jones. And he hasn't taken the ball from him yet. No, instead, he gives him a little pat on the butt and says, hey, give me one more out and let's get out of this thing. So Jones is going to stay out there. The next pitch he throws will be his 88. We mentioned, though, he has thrown as many as 91 on the season. So depending on what happens here against Tobias, he could get up to that season high mark. Here's the first pitch to Tobias, a big swing and a miss from the Sun Devil first baseman, it's 0-1. Cougs do have a lot of relievers at their disposal because of the fact that Grant Taylor and Connor Wil Wilford worked deep into the games on Friday and Saturday. Another big swing and a miss from Tobias and he's quickly behind at 0-2. Jones can execute another pitch here. He can get out of this thing without cutting further into this Cougar lead. That one down in the dirt. Morrow keeps it in front. It's one and two. We'll get a new ball from the home plate umpire, Stephen Corvey. All right, Jones sets, takes a look back at second, now comes to the plate with the one-two delivery, and Tobias got a piece, fouled it right down towards the home plate, and lives to see another pitch here. Mendoza is on deck, should Tobias reach safely. The one-two again. Swing and a miss, Tobias Morrow dropped it, so he'll have to throw over to first, but he does so in time. And Jones likely has ended his outing with a strikeout here, but not before the Sun Devils push two across and cut into the Cougars' lead. It's now five to three as we go to the bottom of the fifth after this. That to-do list you have needs one more thing, chill. It's an easy thing to do. Just crack open an ice cold Coors Light and chill. Take the afternoon off and binge watch anything. Go to happy hour and stay for a couple hours. Who's counting anyways? Or hang out with just your dog because you've had enough human interaction this week. Whatever you do, do it with a Coors Light. Mountain cold refreshment made to chill. 2024 Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Celebrate responsibly. A lot goes into Washington State athletes reaching peak performance for game day, including the right nutrition. At Wilbur Ellis, we know that healthy crop performance requires the same attention to nutrition as an athlete. That's why we use benchmark data points to maximize crop productivity through nutrient efficiency. For 100 years, family-owned Wilbur Ellis has been partnering with Washington's farmers to grow healthier crops. That is the winning ag experience for Cougar Nation, locally provided by Wilbur Ellis. Matt Teeting remains on the mound here for Arizona State. He has already thrown two innings of scoreless relief for the Sun Devils. And the Cougars will lead things off with the third baseman, Cole Kramer. He'll be followed by the center fielder, Logan Johnstone, and the second baseman, Crew Park. The seven, eight, nine hitters in the Cougar lineup to lead things off here in the fifth. Again, it's been a cold, windy, and rainy day here in Pullman, but uh, the rain does look like it's stopped, at least for the time being. I will say that the artificial surface here at Bailey Brayton Field has an excellent drainage system, so despite all the rain, you don't see any puddles forming or anywhere, anything like that that could be an issue to play. All right, so Cole Kramer at the plate, batting 384 now on the year. First pitch to Cole is fouled back and out of play over the right field bleachers. Kramer grounded out back in the second inning and single, but was left stranded at third in the third. 
The 0-1 now to Kramer. Taken outside for ball one. Teeting came on in relief of Wyatt Halverson, and that one is lined up the middle, but right to the second baseman, Mendoza, who can't keep it in his glove. Then he fires errantly over to first base. That's going to allow Kramer to take second. So Cole Kramer lined one right at the second baseman, Mendoza, who somehow couldn't keep it in his glove. And then he frantically fired over to first base, and it got past oh, Tobias, yeah. allowing... Kramer to take second base. I think they're going to have to call it. It, is, it does go on the board as an error here, the third error in this ball game for ASU. And again, wet playing conditions not helping. And that one is smoked into the gap in right center field for Logan Johnstone. Kramer, though, had to hold up. I guess he didn't think, uh, he wasn't sure if it was going to have a chance to get down. So he's held up at third base. I thought for sure that was going to score a run for the Cougs. But nevertheless, Johnstone with his first hit of the season for Washington State. It comes at a big moment here after ASU had closed the gap to 5-3. to three, The Cougs now suddenly have runners at the corners with nobody out in the fifth. So Crew Park at the plate now. He flew out in the second, reached on an error in the third. First pitch from Teeting at the top of the strike zone for ball, or excuse me, strike one at 86 miles an hour. Park 242 now on the season. Does have sacrifice flies in each of the first two games in this series, though. The 0 1 pitch to Park. Outside, ball one. It's one and one. Five three Cougs here in the bottom half of the fifth. Throw over to first. John Stone back in time. Nice to see John Stone really contributing today in a rare start. Hit by a pitch, walked, and now a single. He's reached base all three times. Here's the 1-1 to Park, and that is laced into the gap in left center field. That's going to be double. And scoring easily is Kramer. John Stone rounds first and heads for home. And he'll get in easily. A two-run stand-up double for the second baseman, Crew Park. And just as quickly as Arizona cut into the lead, the Cougs push it back up to four here at seven to three. No doubt about that one. Park had a double all the way off the bat. And it, it was sent out right between the center fielder, McLean, and the left fielder, Williams. And still nobody out here in the fifth and that's going to do it for matt teeting let's pause for a pitching change and we'll tell you who's coming into the game for the sun devils after this it's seven three kooks here in the fifth boost collaborative is a proud sponsor of cougar basketball and is a proud supporter of people with disabilities on the palouse for over 50 years boost collaborative has been here to help families and their toddlers meet developmental milestones for youth and adults boost provides job placement on the job training and follow along supports now you can play a part in boost success through your donations and purchases at palouse treasures thrift store in pullman boost collaborative empowering people with disabilities on the palouse go kooks the Clearwater River Casino and Lodge proudly supports Washington State University Athletics. The premier venue for events and entertainment located four miles east of Lewiston, Idaho. Come hit the jackpot with us with over 600 gaming machines, saltwater pool, restaurant, and giant screens in the stadium sports bar. Owned and operated by the Nez Perce Tribe, our hospitality is legendary. Stay, play, and get away with the Clearwater River Casino. Go Cougs! 
All right, the Sun Devils now on to their third pitcher in this ball game. It's going to be the freshman left-hander Cole Carlin. He stands six foot five and 220 pounds. He's out of Corona del Sol High School in Tempe. So a hometown talent here for the Sun Devils. Carlin comes in with a 9.69 ERA, though. He is 1-1 one one in his previous 11 appearances. Has recorded two saves in 13 innings pitch. He's allowed 19 hits, 14 runs, all of them earned. 10 strikeouts to eight bases on balls, opposing batters hitting 352 against him. So the day is done for Matt Teeting, who was flawless coming into this fifth inning, but then quickly... After Cole Kramer reached on an error, Logan Johnstone singled, and then Crew Park hit a stand-up two-run double to bring in two runs. And the Cougs now lead this one 7-3. to Remember, they're trying to sweep the Sun Devils, which they did two years ago on their last visit here in 2022. And a win today, would, again, would be big for the Cougs. They came into this thing tied for fourth in the Pac-12 standings at 4-4. Four and four on the year. And Max Hartman now at the plate. Walked and scored in the first, singled and scored in the second. And Carlon starts him out with a strike on the outside corner. Hartman did fly out in his third at bat back in the third. So the freshman left-hander on the mound for ASU takes a look back at second, now comes to the plate. Hartman lays down a nice bunt. That's going to get Park over to third easily, and he nearly beats the throw, too. They got him by about a quarter step. And that's the first out of the inning here for the Cougs. <clears throat> the sacrifice, though, advances Park over to third with just one out. Oh, wait a minute now. The umpires are converging here, and they might take a look at the video to see if Hartman was safe. Hartman's standing on the first base bag, so he's pretty convicted, I think, in his position that he made it safely. So the umpires are going to take a look. While they do that, I'll tell you that... Uh, you can order, earn, and enjoy. It's that easy to earn free food with My McDonald's Rewards. Get exclusive offers and rack up rewards. Download that app today. And they're still taking a look here to see if Hartman might have reached base safely on the sacrifice bunt. Let's get you updated on some other scores around the Pac-12 right now. We're actually still waiting for Creighton, Stanford, Utah, Cal, Washington, Oregon State all to start. Also, USC and UCLA. So the only other game in action right now is Arizona at Oregon. And the Ducks lead it 2-0 in the top of the third, although the Wildcats have a runner on with one out in the top half of that frame. And in the NCAA men's basketball tournament, it's Purdue is now, boy, this was a close game for a while, but the Boilermakers have now pulled well ahead of the Utah State Aggies. They lead it by 16 at the half, 49-22. Zach Eady, the 7-4 center, already with 21 points and 11 rebounds in that one. All right, so they do say that Hartman is out on the sacrifice so one out for the Cougs here but Crew Park will remain over there at third base here with Kyle Russell coming to the plate who's been the hero so far here today he's reached base all three times Kyle first pitch swing in fouls one back and out of play it's 0-1 he doubled and scored in the first tripled in the second and reached on an error in the fourth next pitch here to Kyle so I'm going to put on the ground. Park is heading for home. They're not going to be able to get him. So an RBI ground out for Kyle Russell makes it 8-3 to three now. The Cougs with their biggest lead in this entire series here at five runs. Number 
So a nice job by Russell on the ground out to bring home Park. Three runs in for the Cougs, and now Casey Taggart comes to the plate. That first pitch from Carlon is outside at 92 miles per hour for a ball. One zero delivery on the way now. Breaking ball in there for a strike. One and one. Taggart struck out in the first, grounded out in the second, and flew out in the fourth. That pitch misses for ball two. It's two and one. Taggart now batting 329 on the year, six home runs. Now tied for the team lead after Joey Kramer hit another one earlier in this ball game. Three and one now as that pitch misses outside at 91. Imagine Taggart will have the green light here at three and one. Here comes the windup and the delivery just catches the outside corner, three and two. Taggart taps home plate. Then the lefty gets ready to face the lefty. Carlone, 3-2 pitch is chopped right over the pitcher. Tough play for the shortstop on Dina, and he won't get him in time. That ball bounced in front of home plate over the head of the pitcher, Carlone, and Ondina had a long way to come up on it. And Taggart reaches safely on an infield single. So his first hit of the ball game. And the Cougs have a runner on again here now with two outs in the inning. Kramer comes to the plate now. Joey Kramer, I guess I should say, because we have the two Kramers on the Cougs, is two for three so far, a home run and a single. And first pitch swing in, foul back and out of play over the right field bleachers. It's 0 and 1. Kramer was four for four yesterday, so six for his last seven for the Cougs. Here's the 0-1 delivery down low, ball one. The freshman, Carlone's got some heat on that fastball. He's running up over 90 miles per hour several times already. That's an off-speed pitch up high at 83. It's two and one. Eight to three, Washington State here in the bottom of the fifth. That one skips past the catcher Campos and Hartman will easily, excuse me, Taggart will easily trot down to second base. So now a runner in scoring position for the Cougs. Wild pitch from Carlone. So now Kramer with a chance to drive in another run here for Washington State. 3-1, delivery on the way, outside, ball four. So Kramer draws the walk. He's on for the third consecutive time. And that brings up the catcher, Jacob Morrow. Had a two-run double back in the first inning since then. He popped out and then struck out, batting 358 on the year. Three home runs, 12 RBIs. And this could be it for Carlone. Maybe going to bring in a righty to face the right handed hitting catcher. Slow trot out to the mound here for the ASU pitching coach. Actually, that's the head coach, Willie Bloomquist. Hasn't taken the ball from him yet, so maybe just having a word with his reliever and the rest of the infield now. But out behind home plate is Stephen Corvey to say, hey, guys, let's hurry this along here. And no, they will take the ball from Carlone. So we have another pitching change. Let's pause for one minute here, and we'll tell you who's coming in for the Sun Devils after this. 
Which schools will take home the prestigious Learfield Directors Cup for the 2023-24 college athletic season? You can follow the standings of your favorite school or alma mater at L Directors Cup on Twitter and online at thedirectorscup.com. That's thedirectorscup.com and L Directors Cup on Twitter. Trophies will be awarded in June 2024 to the winning institutions in all competitive divisions. Learfield Directors Cup, the crowning achievement in college athletics. The Clearwater River Casino and Lodge proudly supports Washington State University Athletics. The premier venue for events and entertainment located four miles east of Lewiston, Idaho. Come hit the jackpot with us with over 600 gaming machines, saltwater pool, restaurant, and giant screens in the stadium sports bar. Owned and operated by the Nez Perce Tribe, our hospitality is legendary. Stay, play, and get away with the Clearwater River Casino. Go Cooks! All right, the fourth pitcher into the ball game for Arizona State will be Hunter Omlid, the right-handed graduate transfer out of Grand Canyon University, originally from Hamilton, Montana, just about a four-hour drive from here in Pullman. He is a 6'2", 200-pound right-hander. He did come into the ball game uh, as the third pitcher of the game in yesterday's action through just seven pitches, recording one out. So Omlid back into the ball game here for Arizona State and while he continues to take his warm-up tosses let's pause 10 seconds for stations to identify themselves across the Washington State Sports Network from Learfield. All right so the catcher Jacob Morrow Remains at the plate. He is the eighth batter in the inning here for the Cougs, who have already scored three runs in the frame and are back in business here with two out. Omlid takes a look back at second, now comes to the plate, almost hit Moro with that first pitch well inside at 90 miles per hour. Crew Park drove in the first two runs of this inning with a two-run double. Here's the next pitch to Morrow. That is outside corner for strike one. He advanced the third on a ground out and then uh, was driven in by another RBI ground out from Kyle Russell. That was the second out. Since then, Taggart singled and Joey Kramer walked, so the Cougs back in business with two outs. Morrow off the fist right to the first baseman Tobias underhand scoops to Omlid for the third out of the inning so the Cougs leave two runners stranded but not before scoring three they lead it eight to three as we go to the sixth inning after this which schools will take home the prestigious Learfield Directors Cup for the 2023-24 college athletic season? You can follow the standings of your favorite school or alma mater at L Directors Cup on Twitter and online at thedirectorscup.com. That's thedirectorscup.com and L Directors Cup on Twitter. Trophies will be awarded in June 2024 to the winning institutions in all competitive divisions. Learfield Directors Cup, the crowning achievement in college athletics. Boost Collaborative is a proud sponsor of Cougar Basketball and is a proud supporter of people with disabilities on the Palouse. For over 50 years, Boost Collaborative has been here to help families and their toddlers meet developmental milestones. For youth and adults, Boost provides job placement, on-the-job training, and follow-along supports. Now you can play a part in Boost's success through your donations and purchases at Palouse Treasures Thrift Store in Pullman. Boost Collaborative, empowering people with disabilities on the Palouse. Go Cougs! Welcome back to Pullman. As we suspected, the day is done for Cougar starting pitcher Spencer Jones. And into the ball game now is Andrew Bond, a six foot three, 215 pound right hander, a senior out of Las Vegas, Nevada, played two seasons at the College of Southern Idaho, and now in his second season here for the Cougs. Bond comes into this ball game with an 11.37 ERA. He is 0-1 in eight previous appearances. He's pitched just six and a third innings, allowing 16 hits, nine runs, eight of them earned, and three strikeouts against six walks. Batters hitting 485 against him. So Bond was actually pretty 
reliable reliever for the Cougs last season. He was 5-0 and in 32 appearances, but has struggled so far this year. In fact, last year, he had a 4-1 to strikeout to walk ratio, 40 strikeouts to uh, 10 walks. This year, that number inverted, three, or three strikeouts and six walks allowed. So kind of uncharacteristically poor season so far for Andrew Bond, but let's see if he can turn things around here as he gets to operate with a five-run cushion here against the Sun Devils in the sixth. Spencer Jones, again, was outstanding for the Cougs. Uh, allowed just one run through the first four innings and then tired a bit in the fifth when the Sun Devils struck for two. Here's Ethan Mendoza to lead things off for ASU, and Bond starts him with a strike on the outside corner at 81. And next pitch from Bond is down low for a ball, one and one. He goes fastball slider cutter. Also has an older brother, brother playing baseball at Central Oklahoma. That one in there for a strike. One and two now against Ethan Mendoza. One, two on the way to Mendoza. Missed down low, ball two. Two-two delivery on the way, chop to the shortstop. Russell catches it on a hop, throws over to first in time for the first out and Mendoza down on the ground out and Bond has a chance to gain some confidence here recording an out on the first batter he faces. That's gonna bring up the designated hitter Brandon Compton, grounded out in the first, struck out back in the fourth. Bond sets. Here's a delivery to Compton. Strike on the outside corner. 90 mile per hour fastball. And he's ahead of the count here at 0 and 1. Big swing and a miss for Compton. And it's 0 and 2 to the Sun Devils designated hitter. Bond's 0-2 delivery, a lot of movement on that pitch, but it just misses for ball one. It's one and two. And the rain is picked up again. <laughs> and that one just misses outside as well, ball two. Trying to stay away from the lefty who has a lot of power, five home runs on the season. Two-two delivery to Compton, just misses the outside corner. Moro though shaking his head like, yeah, that's that's pretty much right where I wanted it. Just barely missed on the outside half. And that one is swung on and hit, but foul into the Cougar bullpen. And we remains count remains even here at one and two. Three, two delivery on the way to Compton. Swung on and hit up the front line. Fair, Joey Kramer gets a glove on it behind the first base bag, gets to his feet and steps on the bag for the second out. Nice play by Kramer there at first on the sharply hit ball off the bat of Brandon Compton. So two up and two down here in the sixth. Bond gesturing over to his first baseman like, Nice play, bud. Thanks for having my back. That's going to bring up Isaiah Jackson as a pinch hitter here. Jackson started the first two games of this series in center field. And now comes on as a pinch hitter for Josiah Cromwick. Jackson, another guy with some power. Five home runs on the season. First pitch from Bond. 
sawed him off on the inside corner. They say Jackson went around, so it's 0-1. Next pitch. Try to come inside again, but just misses. 1-1. One one. Lot of movement on uh, the two-seamer for Andrew Bond here so far. Here's the 1-1 one -one to Jackson. Misses outside, ball two at 79 miles per hour. Two one delivery, swung on and hit to the shortstop, or excuse me, the second baseman, Crew Park, who spins and fires to first for the third out of the inning. Park was playing him well over towards the first base bag, and that's where Jackson hit it. So nice job in the scouting department to be playing him in that position three up and three down in the six we go to the bottom half of the frame after this eight three coups which schools will take home the prestigious Learfield Directors Cup for the 2023-24 college athletic season? You can follow the standings of your favorite school or alma mater at L Directors Cup on Twitter and online at thedirectorscup.com. That's thedirectorscup.com and L Directors Cup on Twitter. Trophies will be awarded in June 2024 to the winning institutions in all competitive divisions. Learfield Directors Cup, the crowning achievement in college athletics. A lot goes into Washington State athletes reaching peak performance for game day, including the right nutrition. At Wilbur Ellis, we know that healthy crop performance requires the same attention to nutrition as an athlete. That's why we use benchmark data points to maximize crop productivity through nutrient efficiency. For 100 years, family-owned Wilbur Ellis has been partnering with Washington's farmers to grow healthier crops. That is the winning ag experience for Cougar Nation, locally provided by Wilbur Ellis. All right, welcome back to Washington State Baseball here from Bailey Brayton Field. And the skies have opened up again, and the rain is coming down hard once again. Fans got about, I don't know, a 10 or 15-minute break from it, but uh, it is coming down here once again. The, um, or the umbrellas are back out. The ponchos are back on. And the Cougs are looking to expand on an 8-3 to three lead here over the Sun Devils of Arizona State. All-time series between these two schools, decidedly in ASU's favor, 66 to 24, but a lot closer here in Pullman. ASU leads it 19 to 16. The Cougs have won three straight series here, though, in Pullman, and are looking to make it four in a row over the Sun Devils. Uh, actually, they've already made it four in a row over the Sun Devils, but they're looking to make a sweep of this thing with another win here today. The Cougs won 8-7 on Friday night, 3-2 in yesterday's ball game. They lead it 8-3 right now in the bottom half of the six. Hunter Omlid, the fourth pitcher into this ball game for ASU. And he's gonna start off against Eli Kennel. Kennel, as I need to update my scorebook here, coming on as a pinch hitter for the designated hitter, Brandon Ponce. And second pitch is a swing and a miss for Kennel. And the count is even at one and one. Kennel is out of Monmouth, Oregon. And one and one pitch is outside, so it's two and one now. Omelet with a 2-1 delivery. Kennel fouls one off the fence just above the Cougar infield, or the Cougar dugout, I should say. Kennel making his 12th appearance of the year. He's got one hit and 10 at bats on the season. Big swing and a miss for strike three. Kennel goes down swinging. And ASU has one out here in the bottom of the sixth. Third baseman number 32, Cole Kramer. Brings it back to Cole Kramer, the third baseman, who's batting seventh today. He grounded out in the second, singled in the third, and reached on an error and scored back in the fifth. Kramer batting 391 on the year. Swung on and fouled back out of play towards the right field side. And he's... 0-1 here today. The 
junior college transfer has been a really pleasant surprise for the Cougs here so far in this season. Boy, that one almost hit him. Curveball was right at his head. Kramer had to duck out of the way to avoid being plunked in the noggin. We've played just over two hours here in Pullman. Cougs leading it again, eight to three in the bottom half of the sixth. 1-1 one, one delivery to Kramer in there for a strike. And now the count one and two to the Cougar third baseman. Omelette winds and a strike at the knees for strike three. Back-to-back -back strikeouts here for Hunter Omelette. as the Sun Devils really just trying to stay within striking distance of the Cougs, not let them get any further in front and hope for a late inning rally. That's gonna bring up Logan Johnstone. He's reached base all three times in this game, hit by a pitch, walked and singled and scored. First pitch swing and lifts one high into center field. Back on it towards the warning track, towards the wall, and making the catch right in front of the wall is Isaiah Jackson for the third out of the inning. Johnstone put a charge into that one, but it just wasn't quite enough. The Cougs go down in order in the sixth. We'll be back for the seventh inning after this. You're listening to Washington State Baseball from Learfield. That to-do list you have needs one more thing. Chill. It's an easy thing to do. Just crack open an ice-cold Coors Light and chill. Take the afternoon off and binge watch anything. Go to happy hour and stay for a couple hours. Who's counting anyways? Or hang out with just your dog because you've had enough human interaction this week. Whatever you do, do it with a Coors Light. Mountain cold refreshment made to chill. 2024 Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Celebrate responsibly. Which schools will take home the prestigious Learfield Directors Cup for the 2023-24 college athletic season? You can follow the standings of your favorite school or alma mater at L Directors Cup on Twitter and online at thedirectorscup.com. That's thedirectorscup.com and L Directors Cup on Twitter. Trophies will be awarded in June 2024 to the winning institutions in all competitive divisions. Learfield Directors Cup, the crowning achievement in college athletics. Andrew Bond back out there for his second inning of work for the Cougars as they try to hold on to an 8-3 lead here in the top half of the seventh inning. NCAA tournament update, top-seeded Purdue now blowing out eight-seeded Utah State 60-73. to Just under 17 minutes left to play in that one. First pitch on the way to Mario DeMera. First pitch swinging and it is popped up in a shallow right field. The second baseman, Crew Park, is underneath it and he'll make the catch. So one pitch and one out here for Bon in the seventh inning. That brings up the shortstop, Steven Ondina. The other game that's gone final so far in the NCAA tournament is Marquette, the number two seed, knocking off a Pac-12 foe in Colorado, 81 to 77. KJ Simpson, the outstanding guard for the Buffaloes, 20 points and seven assists. Tyler Kolick, the point guard for Marquette, 21 points and 11 assists in the winning effort. First pitch to Andina was a ball. Here comes the second pitch from Bond, and that just misses inside, so it's 2-0. Oh. Bond sets. Here's the 2-0 to Andina. That's in there for a strike at 88 miles an hour. Bond now with a two-one delivery. Put on the ground, past the third baseman Kramer, and into left field for a base hit. First base hit of the ball game for Ondina. He's now one for three, and the Sun Devils have a run around here with one out in the seventh. That sends things back to the top of the order for the left fielder Harris Williams. 
He has scored two of the three runs in this ball game for the Sun Devils. He singled to lead things off in the first, came around to score on a double from Ethan Mendoza, and then also reached on a fielder's choice and scored back in the fifth. First pitch from Bond is chopped high in the air to the second baseman Park. Goes to the short for one, back to first, not in time. So Coos get the lead runner, Demera, at second, but not enough time to catch Williams at first. So he's on with a fielder's choice and two outs in the inning now. That ball bounced a good probably 25 feet in the air, which really didn't give Park much time to be able to turn two. Had it been a little closer to the ground, might have had a chance on the relay to get Williams in time. But that sends up Nick McClain now to the plate with two outs. First pitch is outside, now catches the outside corner, I should say, for a strike at 87 miles an hour. Bonds, next pitch is outside. Morrow keeps it in front. It's one and one. We mentioned Bonds' uncharacteristic struggles so far this year, but <clears throat> if he's able to go two innings of scoreless relief here, that's going to really help his confidence going forward and hopefully make him a more reliable option for Nathan Choate for the remainder of the season. Swung on and lifted high into the air. That's going to leave the yard for a two-run homer. Nick McClain with a no doubt about it two-run homer. And just as I was speaking of Bond's praises, McLean tags him for a two-run homer and that five-run deficit now back to just three for the Sun Devils. Hartman and Johnstone didn't even bother to run after that one as there was no doubt that was clearing the wall. A big, towering two-run homer for McLean, and it's back to just a three-run lead here for the Cougs. First pitch to Ryan Campos now. Low and outside for a ball, 1-0. and oh. Boy, we mentioned McLean's been a tough out for the Cougs in this series. Two for four here today with a double and a homer. Yesterday, he was two for four with a run batted in. And on Friday, he was two for two and also walked twice. So he's been on base all series long. Next pitch to Campos is low. It's two and one. Two one delivery now to Campos on the ground to the first baseman Joey Kramer who will take it to the bag himself, and Bond gets a third out of the inning, but not before a two run homer off the bat of Nick McLean. ASU trying to keep things interesting here. We head to the bottom half of the seventh. It's eight to five Washington State. A lot goes into Washington State athletes reaching peak performance for game day, including the right nutrition. At Wilbur Ellis, we know that healthy crop performance requires the same attention to nutrition as an athlete. That's why we use benchmark data points to maximize crop productivity through nutrient efficiency. For 100 years, family-owned Wilbur Ellis has been partnering with Washington's farmers to grow healthier crops. That is the winning ag experience for Cougar Nation, locally provided by Wilbur Ellis. It's time to bring the big game to your backyard with spring savings on steel. Our AK Homeowner System battery tools start at just $199.99. Find yours at over 10,000 local dealers. Steel is a proud supporter of your Washington State Cougars. Real steel. Find yours. All prices SNW SRP. All right, Hunter Omelette remains on the bump for Arizona State here in the bottom half of the seventh. Due up for the Cougs here will be the second baseman, Crew Park, the right fielder, Max Hartman, and the shortstop, Kyle Russell. Cougs with an 8-5 to five lead here. They have eight hits on 11 hits, excuse me, eight runs on 11 hits and one error. The Sun Devils, five runs on seven hits and three errors. Washington State again trying to complete a three game sweep of Arizona State and get back above 500 in the Pac-12 for the first time since 
their first game of the series, or excuse me, first conference game of the season when they beat Utah here in Pullman two weeks ago. All right, Park flew out in the second, reached on an error in the third, and then hit a two-run double and came around to score as part of a three-run fifth inning. First pitch from Omlid, just misses outside for a ball. And uh, the rain seems to have let up again here in Pullman. Second pitch from Omlid, down low, it's 2-0. Two-zero pitch in there. Oh, just misses low. I thought that was uh, over the plate, but it must have been low for a ball. Three and zero. So Park will likely be taken all the way here because the Coos would love to have a leadoff walk, and that's inside for ball four. So a four-pitch walk. Park heads to first base, and that brings things back to the top of the order for Max Hartman. Walked and scored in the first, singled and scored in the second, and then flew out in the third and grounded out in the fifth. Omelet takes a look over to first. Now comes to the plate, the first pitch to Hartman, swung on and popped high in the air. On Dina, the shortstop going back. Instead, the left fielder Williams will come in, and he makes the running catch for the first out of the inning. That brings up the shortstop Kyle Russell, who's had an outstanding day so far. He is two for four, two runs driven in, and a run scored. He has doubled and tripled in this one. Also reached on an error. Batting average now up to 276 on the season. First pitch in there for a strike at 80 miles per hour from Omelid. O one one delivering out of Russell. Misses down low, ball one. Omelette nearly saw the shot, or the pitch clock expire on that one. It was down to two before he began his windup. All right, a quick look over to first. And now a throw to first, Park back in time. Not too big of a lead over there at first base. Omelid sets. And now a throw over to first again. Taking a lot of time on the mound there. Another peek over to first. Now the 1-1 one -one to Russell. Park was going and makes contact, and he'll be able to take third easily on the base hit through the side and into right center field for Russell. So a three-hit day for the Cougar shortstop, Kyle Russell, and the Cougs now have runners at the corners with one out here in the seventh. Park was taken off on contact, and then he had to kind of hold up because the ground ball from Russell nearly hit him between first and second base, and I think that's going to do it here for Hunter Omlid. As Willie Bloomquist out of the dugout, he takes the ball from his fourth pitcher of the ball game. We'll see who's coming in as a fifth pitcher after this break for a pitching change. You're listening to Washington State Baseball from Learfield.
The Clearwater River Casino and Lodge proudly supports Washington State University Athletics. The premier venue for events and entertainment located four miles east of Lewiston, Idaho. Come hit the jackpot with us with over 600 gaming machines, saltwater pool, restaurant, and giant screens in the stadium sports bar. Owned and operated by the Nez Perce Tribe, our hospitality is legendary. Stay, play, and get away with the Clearwater River Casino. Go Cougs! That to-do list you have needs one more thing. Chill. It's an easy thing to do. Just crack open an ice-cold Coors Light and chill. Take the afternoon off and binge watch anything. Go to happy hour and stay for a couple hours. Who's counting anyways? Or hang out with just your dog because you've had enough human interaction this week. Whatever you do, do it with a Coors Light. Mountain cold refreshment made to chill. 2024 Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Celebrate responsibly. All right, the day is done for the fourth reliever, or excuse me, I say the fourth pitcher of the game for Arizona State here. And now in for the fifth pitcher for ASU is Matt Cornelius. He is a six foot, 185 pound junior left handed pitcher out of Zuni, New Mexico, and Pima Community College. On the season, Cornelius is 2-0. and He's making his fifth appearance. He has a 10.80 ERA. He's pitched five innings for the Sun Devils, allowed seven hits, all of them earned. Excuse me, seven hits, seven runs, six of them earned. He has struck out eight and walked three. Opponents batting 292 against him. So, ASU skipper Willie Bloomquist aware of the importance of trying to hang in this ball game goes with the hook against Hunter Omelette after he allows runners to reach on the corners here in the seventh and now we'll hand the ball to Matt Cornelius uh, to try to keep this a three-run game and not let the Cougs get any further out in front. And a dangerous hitter coming to the plate here for the Cougs now in Case and Taggart. Taggart one for four today. Singled in his last at bat though back in the fifth. He hit a big two run homer in the series opener on Friday night as part of a six run five inning explosion for the Cougs. Here comes the first pitch to Corn from Cornelius. Just catches the outside corner against the left-handed hitting Taggart, and it's 0-1. Taggart stands six foot six. An imposing presence there in the batter's box. Next pitch on the way to Taggart. Up high, ball one. So Crew Park is out there at third after leading off with a walk. Kyle Russell at first base with a one-out single. And here comes the 1-1 one -one to Case and Taggart instead of throw over to first to chase Russell back to the bag. Russell, three stolen bases on the season. Here's the 1-1 one -one to Taggart. Swing and a miss at a breaking pitch on the outside corner. Got him chasing, and it's one and two. Wind still blowing out towards right field. Good for a left-handed hitter like Taggart. One-two pitch coming. Taggart lays off this one, and it's two and two. Not sure what that pitch is from Cornelius, but it has a lot of movement tailing away from a left-handed hitter, and it's coming across in the mid-70s. Here's the 2-2 now to Taggart. Swing and a miss. He went to it again for strike three. Taggart goes down on strikes, and the Cougs now with two outs here in the seventh. Second strikeout of the game for Taggart. That's going to bring up Joey Kramer, who's been the hitting hero. And that might be it for Cornelius. It might have just been a lefty in to face a lefty. And they're going to change pitchers again, I think. Indeed, they will. Willie Bloomquist takes the ball from Matt Cornelius. And we'll have a sixth 
pitcher for ASU after this another quick timeout here. Boost Collaborative is a proud sponsor of Cougar Basketball and is a proud supporter of people with disabilities on the Palouse. For over 50 years, Boost Collaborative has been here to help families and their toddlers meet developmental milestones. For youth and adults, Boost provides job placement, on-the-job training, and follow-along supports. Now you can play a part in Boost's success through your donations and purchases at Palouse Treasures Thrift Store in Pullman. Boost Collaborative, empowering people with disabilities on the Palouse. Go Cougs! The Clearwater River Casino and Lodge proudly supports Washington State University Athletics. The premier venue for events and entertainment located four miles east of Lewiston, Idaho. Come hit the jackpot with us with over 600 gaming machines, saltwater pool, restaurant, and giant screens in the stadium sports bar. Owned and operated by the Nez Perce Tribe, our hospitality is legendary. Stay, play, and get away with the Clearwater River Casino. Go Cooks! All right, a sixth pitcher into the ball game here now for the Arizona State Sun Devils. It's going to be Ryan Schieffer. He is a six foot three, hundred seventy five pound right handed junior out of Gilbert, Arizona, and Central Arizona College. Eighteen and two thirds innings pitched this year. He's had just a one point four five ERA, twenty five strikeouts, and twelve walks allowed. Schieffer actually came on and pitched the eighth inning in Friday night's contest. And Cougs tagged him for two runs, one of them earned. He allowed two hits, two strikeouts, and two walks while throwing 36 pitches in that ball game. But after a day of rest yesterday, Schieffer deemed able to pitch again here in the seventh. The rain can't decide what it's doing here in Pullman. It is starting to sprinkle here once again, and we're seeing the winds seem to pick up as well. You can even hear some of that wind on our crowd mic behind home plate. All right, so Joey Kramer at the dish now for the Cougs. So we had lefty versus lefty in Cornelius versus Taggart. And now we have righty versus righty here in Schieffer versus Morrow. I'm sorry, Morrow versus Kramer. Kramer's reached in three of four appearances today. That one way outside. Campos had to come out of his stance just to keep it from going to the backstop. That would have scored Crew Park had it gotten away from him. Parked out there at third. Kyle Russell's on at first. Two outs here in the seventh. Cougs with a three-run lead and looking to add to it. 1-0 to Kramer. Swung on and poked just foul up the left field line. Boy, about nine more inches. That thing stays fair. And the Cougs have a four run lead. Kramer up to 370 on the season. And now tied with Taggart for the team high in home runs with six. Here is the 1-1 one, one from Schieffer, swung on and lifted high into the air. I think that's going to get out of play. Maybe not, though. Campos with the mask off, and he's on the Cougar logo behind home plate, and he makes the catch for the third out of the inning. It looked like it was going to go out of play, but the winds might have blown it back in, and the Cougs are not able to take advantage of two runners on with one out in the seventh. We'll go to the eighth after this. It's Washington State 8, Arizona State 5. Which schools will take home the prestigious Learfield Directors Cup for the 2023-24 college athletic season? You can follow the standings of your favorite school or alma mater at L Directors Cup on Twitter and online at thedirectorscup.com. That's thedirectorscup.com and L Directors Cup on Twitter. Trophies will be awarded in June 2024 to the winning institutions in all competitive divisions. Learfield Directors Cup, the crowning achievement in college athletics. That to-do list you have needs one more thing. Chill. It's an easy thing to do. Just crack open an ice-cold Coors Light and chill. Take the afternoon off and binge watch anything. Go to happy hour and stay for a couple hours. Who's counting anyways? Or hang out with just your dog because you've had enough human interaction this week. Whatever you do, do it with a Coors Light. 
Mountain cold refreshment made to chill. 2024 Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Celebrate responsibly. All right, new pitcher into the ball game here for Washington State to pitch in the eighth. It is Ryan Orr, a six foot, 201 pounder. He's a sophomore right hander out of Tumwater, Washington. And Tumwater High School, or is a sophomore making just his seventh appearance on the year. He does have a 1.35 ERA, though, six and a two thirds innings pitch. He's allowed three hits, two runs, one of them earned, eight strikeouts, and six walks allowed. Opposing hitters batting just 130 against him, so he's been outstanding in relief, uh, although in limited action so far here this season. And he's going to be facing. The middle of the Sun Devils order in first baseman Jacob Tobias, second baseman Ethan Mendoza, and DH Brandon Compton. Tobias, 0 for 3 so far on the day with two strikeouts. Does have four home runs on the year though, and Orr steps off the mound here really quickly to reset. Orr's first pitch of the game to Tobias, swung on and hit to the second baseman, Crew Park, who ranges to his right, throws over to Kramer for the first out of the inning. So one pitch and one down here for Orr in the eighth. That brings up Ethan Mendoza. Taking a look at some other Pac-12 action taking place around the conference right now. In Eugene, Oregon and Arizona tied at two in the top of the sixth. At Sunken Diamond in Palo Alto, scoreless between Stanford and Creighton. First pitch on the way to Mendoza, low for ball one. The Beavers have jumped out against the Huskies again in Corvallis. They lead it 4-0 in the bottom of the second. That one chopped right in front of the mound, but foul. Looked like it might trickle into play, but instead it stayed foul down the third base side. And it goes to one and one here on Mendoza. The Cal Utah game in Berkeley was supposed to start at 105, but we're not showing anything on the live scoring just yet. That's in there for a strike. 79 miles per hour from Orr, and it's one and two. The one-two pitch now from Orr. Swung on and hit to the shortstop. Russell catches it on two hops. And now a one-hopper throw across the infield to Kramer is in time. And two outs in the inning here for Washington State. Back-to-back -back ground outs induced by Orr. And ASU now with just four outs left as they try to make something happen here. Compton lifts one high into the air in left field. Taggart back near the warning track, and he makes the catch for out number three. So three up and three down for the Sun Devils here in the seventh. We go to the bottom half of the eighth. It's still eight to five, Washington State in the lead. Hey, Cougs, life doesn't stop at retirement. Bishop Place has a wide range of activities, social events, and fitness options depending on your interests. We have many options to explore depending on the level of care you need. Bishop Place also has housekeeping, dining, and transportation services. Less worry, less chores, more life, and more choices. Visit us on the web at bishopplace.net or call to schedule your tour today, 509-334-9488. We can't wait to see you. A lot goes into Washington State athletes reaching peak performance for game day, including the right nutrition. At Wilbur Ellis, we know that healthy crop performance requires the same attention to nutrition as an athlete. That's why we use benchmark data points to maximize crop productivity through nutrient efficiency. For 100 years, family-owned Wilbur Ellis has been partnering with Washington's farmers to grow healthier crops. That is the winning ag experience for Cougar Nation, locally provided by Wilbur Ellis. All right, welcome back live to Bailey Brayton Field here 
on the campus of Washington State University, and the Cougs are inching closer to a sweep of the Arizona State Sun Devils as they lead it 8-5 to five as we play in the bottom half of the eighth inning. Ryan Schieffer, the sixth pitcher into this ball game for Arizona State will remain out there here in the eighth and leading things off for the Cougs is the catcher Jacob Morrow he'll be followed by uh, Eli Kennel most likely because he came on as a pinch hitter for Brandon Ponce back in the sixth and Cole Kramer the third baseman first pitch to Morrow at the top of the strike zone for strike one. Next delivery from Schieffer catches the outside corner of the plate at 80 miles per hour for strike two, 0 oh and two. Morrow batting 352 on the year, three home runs and 12 runs driven in. Next pitch from Schieffer on the way. Just misses outside, ball one. Morrow had a two-run double all the way back in the first inning. Next pitch from Schieffer. Swung on and lifted just beyond the first base bag, and Tobias is there to make a catch standing on the foul line for out number one. And that's going to bring up... It will be Kennel still. He struck out in his only at bat back in the sixth. Eli batting 091 on the season. First pitch from Schieffer, big swing and a miss for Kennel. And it's 0 and 1. Well, one delivery on the way now. Another swing and a miss at an off-speed pitch at 82. And it's 0-2 to Kennel. O2 delivery now. That gets away from the catcher Campos. Back to the backstop, and it's 1-2. and two. Cougar player quickly out of the dugout to retrieve the ball. Schieffer now winds the one two to Kennel. Down low ball two, two and two. Kennel a transfer from Oregon State. He was a two time Oregon player of the year. Here comes the two two now. Up high and outside. Ball three. So after being behind 0 oh and 2, Kennel now finds himself ahead in the count here at 3 and 2. Pitch on the way from Schieffer, fouled off back towards the on-deck circle. And Kennel stays alive. Just a sophomore is Kennel out of Santium Christian High School in Monmouth. 3-2 pitch now, up high, and he draws a walk. So nice patience by Eli Kennel to draw the one-out walk here in the eighth. And that'll bring up Cole Kramer. Paul Kramer. Kramer grounded out in the second, singled in the third, reached on an error and scored in the fifth, and then struck out in the sixth. First pitch from Schieffer in there at a strike, fastball at 91. Kennel has attempted one stolen base and was unsuccessful. Here's the 0 1 to Kramer outside. Ball one, one and one. And now Schiefer throws over to first to chase Kennel back to the bag. Coors Light, Mountain Cold Refreshment, made to chill. Proud partner of Cougar Athletics, celebrate responsibly. It is eight to five, Washington State in the lead here in the eighth inning. Next pitch from Schieffer, inside, ball two. 
ASU struck first in the top half of the first inning, but the Cougs counter with two in the bottom of the frame and have not trailed since. Here's the 2-1 to Cole Kramer. Outside, ball three. Kennel was taken off. He got a kind of a bad start, and he gets thrown out at second base. Kennel might have just stumbled out of his break as he was taken off for second base, but he really had no chance to get there as the throw was accurate from Campos and beat him by probably a step and a half. So now two down in the inning for Kramer. Here's the 3-1 from Schieffer. Swung on and hit up the line of right field. Lance just fouled, less than a foot. And Kramer with a long walk back to first base now. All right, here's the 3-2 delivery from Schieffer. Swung on a line right back to the pitcher. Catches it on one bounce, then underhands to Tobias at first for the third out of the inning. But it's now closing time for the Cougs as we head to the top of the ninth, just needing three more outs to get this one in the books. We're back with the ninth inning action after this. This is Washington State Baseball from Learfield. The Clearwater River Casino and Lodge proudly supports Washington State University Athletics. The premier venue for events and entertainment located four miles east of Lewiston, Idaho. Come hit the jackpot with us with over 600 gaming machines, saltwater pool, restaurant, and giant screens in the stadium sports bar. Owned and operated by the Nez Perce Tribe, our hospitality is legendary. Stay, play, and get away with the Clearwater River Casino. Go Cougs! Boost Collaborative is a proud sponsor of Cougar Basketball and is a proud supporter of people with disabilities on the Palouse. For over 50 years, Boost Collaborative has been here to help families and their toddlers meet developmental milestones. For youth and adults, Boost provides job placement, on-the-job training, and follow-along supports. Now you can play a part in Boost's success through your donations and purchases at Palouse Treasures Thrift Store in Pullman. Boost Collaborative, empowering people with disabilities on the Palouse. Go Cougs! Ryan Orr is going to remain out there here for the ninth inning. The Cougs three outs away now from a sweep of the Arizona State Sun Devils, which would give them a 15-8 record on the season overall and a 5-4 and four record in the Pac-12. But leading things off for the Sun Devils is Isaiah Jackson, and Orr starts him off with a breaking ball up high and outside for ball one. Jackson did not start this game. He came on as a pinch hitter for Josiah Cromwick back in the sixth. Next pitch to Jackson on the ground to the second baseman Park. Going to backhand it, bobbles it, and can't get it in the glove. So a rare error for the Cougar second baseman allows Jackson, the, or the uh, leadoff man here for the Sun Devils, to reach base here in the top of the ninth. Cougs won 8-7 to seven on Friday night, 3-2 to two yesterday afternoon, and now trying to close out the sweep here in the ninth inning. And we've got another pinch hitter in Kien Vu, who has come on as a pinch hitter in each of the first two games in this series as well. Vu was 0-1 in yesterday's game, but batting 409 on the year. First pitch from Orr is outside ball one. Vu did have a hit in his pinch hit appearance in Friday night's series opener. Right, or looks in, now comes to the plate, and that is a perfect double play ball, but Russell can't snag it. Instead, he has to pick it up, and then he fires high. Back-to-back -back errors by the Cougs, and now all of a sudden, ASU has runners at the corners with nobody out. It looked like a potential for a double play ball 
The sure-handed Kyle Russell couldn't snag it though, and then he couldn't make the flip in time to park it second. He then had to opt to go to first, and he panicked on the throw and threw it over the head of Joey Kramer. And now Nathan Choate out of the dugout to discuss things with his pitcher and infield here. Maybe just being like, hey guys, settle down. We're up three, we got this, but Vu on the errant throw was actually able to take second base. So it's second and third for ASU with nobody out here in the ninth. Boy, yeah, they're actually gonna call that an error fielding and an error throwing on Russell. So three errors in the inning and two on that play. And of course, now in an important part of the ball game, my live scoring broadcast has seemed to <laughs> lose connection. We'll see if we can get it back here in just a second. All right, but or is going to remain out there. And I think ASU is checking on Kien Vu to make sure he's okay. He just took off from second base to see if he could run. ASU coaching staff seems satisfied. All right, that's gonna bring up Steven Ondina now. First pitch from Orr up high, ball one. So Jackson reaches on the error from the second baseman Park, and then Vu reaches on the errors from the shortstop Russell. That's in there for a strike, 85 miles per hour on the outside corner against the right-handed hitting Ondina. Cougs just need three outs, and they're up by three runs. But the Sun Devils have runners at second and third with nobody out. Here's the 1-1. Swing and a miss by Ondina at a fastball at 88. Or got him to chase it out of the zone. Or sets on the mound. Here comes the one two to Ondina. Swung on and lifted. Foul. And it's going to get out of play. For a second, it looked like it might have a chance to stay in play, and Morrill might be able to make a play in front of the ASU dugout, but it drifts out. And the count remains here at one and two. All right, pressure situation here for the pitcher, Ryan Orr, trying to preserve the lead here for the Cougs in the top of the ninth. One, two, and it's lifted down the right field line in foul territory. Hartman giving chase right in front of the wall, and he bangs into the fence hard as the drifts into the ASU bullpen. Boy, he hit the fence really hard and is now walking gingerly back towards right field. The second baseman, Park, and the first baseman, Kramer, kind of walking with him to make sure he's okay. He kind of bends over in pain there for a second. I wonder if he's going to be able to stay in the game. Choate's out of the dugout just to make sure, and now he goes back towards the dugout. Looks like Hartman is going to be okay. He's looking at his elbow right now. Boy, he ran full sprint into that fence. Meanwhile, Orr looks in, and he's going to come back with another 1-2 delivery here to Ondina. That one's lifted into right field. Hartman there underneath it to make the play. Tagging is Jackson. No, he'll retreat back to third base. So the Cougs get an out, and nobody comes around to score. It was hit just shallow enough, I guess, that Jackson didn't want to test the arm of Hartman. 
So a fly out for Ondina, and that brings up Harris Williams. More importantly for the Cougs, though, one out recorded and no runs in. First pitch to Williams, swung on and chopped foul. Back toward the ASU on deck circle. Next pitch from Bond on the way. Outside, ball one. All right, or sets. 1-1 one, one delivery to Williams. Foul back toward the ASU dugout. Jackson on at third. Kien Vu out there at second. Cougs with a three-run lead and the tying run here at the plate in Williams. 1-2 delivery from Orr. Check the swing. Did he go around? They say no, he did not. So the count will go to 2-2. Two and two. Here comes a 2-2 two -two from Orr. Swung on and hit into left field. Taggart's underneath it. He's going to make the play. Jackson is tagging and will score on this one to make it 8-6. to six. But more importantly, ASU is now down to their final out. So Jackson scores on the sacrifice fly. Vu remains out there at second base. And Nick McLean, who hit a two-run homer in his last at-bat in the seventh, is at the plate now with a chance to potentially tie it for ASU. Nathan Choate out of the dugout, and this might be the end of the road here for Ryan Orr. Choate having a word with his pitcher and his infield, but no motion to the bullpen yet. In fact, somebody did just come out of the bullpen. So let's pause one minute for the pitching change. We'll tell you who's coming in to close it out for the Cougs after this. Which schools will take home the prestigious Learfield Directors Cup for the 2023-24 college athletic season? You can follow the standings of your favorite school or alma mater at L Directors Cup on Twitter and online at thedirectorscup.com. That's thedirectorscup.com and L Directors Cup on Twitter. Trophies will be awarded in June 2024 to the winning institutions in all competitive divisions. Learfield Directors Cup, the crowning achievement in college athletics. The Clearwater River Casino and Lodge proudly supports Washington State University Athletics. The premier venue for events and entertainment located four miles east of Lewiston, Idaho. Come hit the jackpot with us with over 600 gaming machines, saltwater pool, restaurant, and giant screens in the stadium sports bar. Owned and operated by the Nez Perce Tribe, our hospitality is legendary. Stay, play, and get away with the Clearwater River Casino. Go Cooks! Cougars head coach Nathan Choate told me before the game that the only reliever probably not available for this game would be Chase Grillo after he pitched the ninth inning on both Friday and yesterday's ball game. But guess who comes out of the bullpen in a high leverage situation? It's the closer from Kennewick. Grillo back out there to pitch the ninth. And before we get to his numbers on the season, let's pause 10 seconds for stations to identify themselves here on the Washington State Sports Network from Learfield. Grillo has 12 career saves, including three this season. He has a 3.86 ERA. He is 0-1 in, 
in 10 previous appearances this season. 14 innings pitched. He's allowed 11 hits, six runs, all of them earned. 23 strikeouts versus just five walks. Opposing hitters batting 220 against him. So even though he was used on Friday and Saturday, when it comes down to crunch time, who do you call on? Your number one closer, Chase Grillo. And here he just needs to get one more out. But he's facing a dangerous hitter in Nick McClain, who's two for four with a double and a two-run homer in his last at-bat. Kien Vu is out there at second base. The count is eight to six. Coogs in front. Grillo sets and his first pitch to McLean is in there for a strike 92 miles per hour. You know Nathan Choke, the Cougar head coach, would love the this, this sweep of the Sun Devils here today. So he's putting all his cards on the table by going back to Grillo here. Here's the 0-1. Just misses outside. In fact, Moro lost it momentarily, but Vu retreats to second rather than attempting to try to take an extra base. Coog's making it interesting here in the ninth. They've already allowed one run to come around to score and a runner in scoring position at second base in Vu. Here's the 1-1 one -one to McLean, hit into left field and that's gonna be just foul. Wow, that would have been trouble, but it landed inches foul. Vu would have scored easily and McLean likely would have made it to second with a double. Instead, the count goes to one and two. Grillo looks in. Here's the one-two to McLean. Outside. And McLean laid off. It's two and two. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, and a two-run lead for the Cougs here in the top of the ninth inning. Grillo, the delivery to McLean, swing and a miss for strike three, and the Cougars have swept the Arizona State Sun Devils, hanging on to win eight to six here on the Sunday afternoon as Grillo closes it out for the third time in as many games. Washington State now improves to 15 and eight on the year, five and four in Pac-12 play, and they're now eight and three in the friendly confines of Bailey Brayton Field. We're back with the post game after this. This is Washington State baseball from Learfield.